Please note the views and opinions expressed by the hosts on this show are not necessarily the views held by the station. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio. Now it's our turn. Yeah, well, the views may not necessarily be the views and opinions of uh, the station, but they damn well should be. It's my my position on it. Hi, guys. Anyway, <laughs> that was fun trying to get on the air tonight. <laughs> Of course, I couldn't get any promo up. My whole Internet Explorer froze up, of course. Uh, it was working just fine until I was starting to get <laughs> set up for the show here. Um, yeah, that's just not unusual anymore. <laughs> it's actually laughable. But all things for a reason, and uh, we just have to figure out what the hell the reason is. But most of us get caught up in the drama as to why shit happens and all the rest of it, and we never bother to actually look any deeper than that. And it's so superficial, and it's so super silly. <laughs> yeah, I, I was out for a while today. Uh, my friend Richard came down and um, just dragged my sorry ass out for a bit. And uh, I had a blast. It was so much fun. Um, that was actually... What, what, oh, there's so much to talk about. There's just so much energy and so much like, whoa, to talk about today. Um, and it started last night. Well, it started actually about June 15th, 1964, but I just wasn't paying attention until now is how it kind of works. Um, yeah, and um, a friend Mike stopped by as well. It's great to see him. And I wasn't here too long, um, but I had a good chat with him. And uh, um, he was off to help a, a friend. Uh, I think it was a... <laughs> what did I say to him? He said, yeah, I'm going over. To, uh, we got a... Um, install a, a new tranny in the truck. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, so what it is is uh, you're making today a, a day of working with trannies. Is that is that how it works? Anyway, so uh, of course that was hot on the heels of this most beautiful speech given last. Well, I saw it last night. I'm not sure when exactly it was given. Very recently, obviously, uh, by Lana Wachowski. And. Uh, I got to tell you, I, wa- I watched it last night, and I, I listened to Lana tell my story, and so many others, all wrapped him up into one because they're all the same story. And um, I got to tell you, uh, it was to give you, uh, and again, look at the coincidences, which aren't any, uh, of all the things that have been happening. And this is what I'm going to talk about tonight, because I'm going to really lay it on the line for you guys to show you just how freaking awesome, magical, and crazy this place is once you could start to see it and start to manifest it. Um, and I'm not talking, you know, all these guys with the, and girls with the self-help books and, you know, the secret and all the rest, they haven't got a fucking clue. Honestly, they don't, they don't, because everyone's so caught up in the, in the literal, and it's so, ah, uh, it's so drama. <laughs> what are they looking for, Oscar? Um, give up. <laughs> anyway, I, I watched this this interview last night, and I watched Lana as she was just. It was beautiful. It was just this. The whole time I'm listening, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's ex- yeah, constantly. That yeah, she so want you know, but. I also thought of something too, because the first thing that came out was when she was talking about um, not wanting to do interviews, you know, doing the press thing, uh, her and her brother, right? Uh, of course, they were known as the Wachowski brothers, which I know for her would be very uncomfortable, uh, in as much as any time I um, hear, just because my voice is uh, very masculine, uh, hear people refer to me as uh, he or him. Um, I do I do I know it's confusing and I I I I give a lot of latitude on that one. Um and I do understand, I do cuz when you're in this literal illusion, it's very difficult to shift those gears. And and this is effectively what beings like me do. We shift your gears. We make your day interesting. We make it seem a little bit less than normal, you know? Um I know the people at the mall today. <laughs> it was great. Honestly, it was just um on fire. Uh, I'll tell you what happened last night. Um, I got to find me, and like to a level that I can't even describe. <laughs> um, 
yeah, there was so so much poignancy in 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 the words she was sharing, and you know, and you got one of the things, and it really it really struck home um, when she was uh, talking about you know potential relationships or whatever, and and being caught in the middle, and how could you know how could anyone ever ever love me, you know. Uh, See, and that's one of the things about my life is I've lived, I, you know, I lived in the illusion, um, literally chaining myself to something that wasn't me in order to, one, survive, two, um, to set aside. <sighs> I, there are no words to describe this. You've got to live this particular dream, nightmare, whatever you want to call it, in order to see it from this perspective. Uh, but being caught between worlds and in you know, forcing yourself because of societal norms into a, an uber state of the exact opposite of who you are. It gives you great conditioning. Don't get me wrong. Uh, that's why I'm able to share the things that I can share because I've pushed the opposite pendulum of what I am to the furthest extremes that I could. You know, and I lived it. I lived it. And just to see this wonderful being last night in full technicolor loved her hair i don't <laughs> i thought it was stunning um talk about fully expressing oneself but when she was talking about relationships and whatever and and this is what i thought i had with sue uh, i thought i was the luckiest girl in the world um when she uh met her wife Her wife said to her, I, said, I didn't come for the bells and whistles. It's, I can't remember how she put it, but it was perfect. You know, um, It's that very difference about you that, that I love. It's that very extreme. You know, uh, So effectively what Lana has experienced is, is unconditional love, and that's beautiful. And, it's, it's, and this is exactly what I'm trying to convey to people, the unconditional aspect. And we are we are all so very very blind, myself included, for so long. Um, the eyes are certainly a little bit more open today. And of course, um, I came on to Skype this morning. I uh, saved a, a bunch of the conversation that was going on because what was occurring this morning, as soon as I sat down at the computer, was uh, instantaneous download uh, and trail. I used to do this all the time, by the way, in in uh, like chat rooms. I would show people my the trails that I was uh, walking down. Um, I was doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing now from a, from the literal perspective, but still seeing the tie-ins, uh, the subtleties and the coincidences, but not giving them the full weight and measure of what they were really presenting to me. And this is what I'm trying to share with all of you now. And so many of you, it's so beautiful to see, are seeing it. You're seeing the, the oh, that's a coincidence all the time. You, you'll be in conversations with people and now words are triggering with you. Uh, I think the... The, the big one of late that I've been watching is uh, dragonflies uh, or dragons in, in general with uh, with the people close to me, um, which of course, as you're all aware, you're the dragon and I got a dragonfly on my shoulder, and so it, it, that always resonates with me. So it's really neat when I hear other people talking about it. And uh, 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 Ninja shared a beautiful picture that she uh, that she created. Um, what was it? Dragons. Uh, Perch, I believe is the title of it. Hope I got that right, Ninja. Um, it's gorgeous. You know, it, it, and yeah, wow. We need to set you up a gallery, baby. <laughs> yeah. The energies are, are incredible. Had a great chat, and actually Ninja had a chance to have a chat with Richard as well, and I was only on hearing the one side of it, but it was uh, just watching things that Richard was saying, and and you could see the coincidences happening with him, and it's like, and he lives in that world too. So this is why it's so uh, neat when I get a chance to hang out with him because he speaks the same language as this. So it's it's beautiful. Um, but I went I went on this, uh, and I have to say, uh, uh, Tracy was the one that posted this link uh, yesterday with uh, how interesting it was that Pluto's new moons. And their and their names. So of course, uh, reading reading the article and uh, <laughs> lights and fireworks were going off at all points while I was reading through this. 
so and, and I was sharing a bit of that this morning, um, and this is from yesterday. So I, the, what I'm going to go over t- uh, tonight is what what it was experienced this morning, and um, I'm not, obviously not going to go through the whole thing, but there was a lot of really fascinating information in it, and I love watching you guys that are starting to rip the words apart perfectly. And then I'm going to share with you the biggest epiphany I've had in a long time la- that I had last night. And it's it's not so much an epiphany of a new realization, it's a it's an epiphany of an absolute confirmation that we are bang on that we have nailed this puppy shut and that the gig is up. <laughs> it's done. The fat lady is going la. She's singing real loud right now. Um I'll share that with you first and I'll get into some of this other fun stuff here. Um, oh, it's going to be fun tonight. So I was, um, who was I talking to? Uh, I think it was um, Michael and Randy just for a little while after the call last night. And um, what struck me was the fact that, okay, let, let, let's look at the allegory of the legal system. right? That's all it is. It's just an allegory. It's an illusion. And a damn good one, too. They got you running. So let's show you how to destroy it, <laughs> shall we? Because <laughs> this is way more fun. Okay, first thing you got to do, if you want to play this game, if you want to play with me, you're going to have to lose one thing. You're going to have to lose the emotional attachment to the game. Because it's not about who can you beat and who can you do and oh, whatever. That's still that's still such a low level in the belly of the beast game. Me, I would sooner just take the, you know, the arrow and go... Shoot it into the belly of the beast, have a giggle, and walk away. You know, just, there's no point getting, hey, listen, if you had an option of, you know, having to go over and take Goliath, well, imagine David and Goliath. Imagine if, if the the only weapon David had was a sword to go up against Goliath, who had a sword. Who do you think would win that one? Right. So what we have to learn to do is take our weapons of choice, the ones that we can utilize. Right? So we all get, we got have to look at ourselves as we're all that fictional character David uh, with a slingshot, as it were. And of course, where did David hit Goliath? Right in the third eye and (laughs) and then cut his head off. Uh, A little bit of a gory allegory, but there you go, allegory. Anyway, um, but that's what we have to do. We have to be more mindful and and so many of us, uh, myself included, you know, took the beast head on with uh, whatever you know, weapons we had, and I use those allegorically, um, and tools in order to go at it. And I was very fortunate, and in, in I had, uh, if not necessarily the right tools, I had the right armor to protect me up to this point. Um, and that I had been working at for a couple of decades, and I'm talking that was the, the stuff that sustained me for, and Sue and the girls for... Uh, for uh, for three years, anyway. Uh, well, two and a half, because... Well, it's actually more than that. Long story there. don't need to get into it. Uh, let's just say those particular assets drained very quickly. Um, you know, when you're actually not bringing anything in, in terms of income, uh, for... Well, now it's like it's three and a half years now since... Um, yeah, over three and a half years since I've... Uh, had any uh, form of a of an income uh, checks or whatever you know from general contracting um, very good income to nothing and that drained very quickly so that was part of my my armor uh, to keep me in the in the fight as it were uh, not everyone um, well actually I can't even say that because we all have our tools uh, at, uh, and have built everything around us that we need all we need to do now is put those into motion, put those into, you know, effect. And uh, it's as simple as instead of trying to be the, you know, the David with the sword going up against Goliath with the sword, um, no, t- take your option, stand back and and uh, take out Goliath from a very safe distance. And that's what uh, I who shall not be named is. That's the, that's the stone in the sling. And all you have to do is stand back and fire it out. Right? Thing, thing, thing. And every one of those seeds, I promise you, will germinate because it's your intention. It's got nothing to do with the document. The truth is already there. It's already been un, 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 you know, unfolded. It doesn't matter who gets it. It's already got. That's why I'm saying the fat lady's singing, right? So, um, 
Yeah, what a day. What a day. Uh, and the cards I've been pulling uh, from the Mayan deck and from the Arthurian, it's just mind-blowing. Um, <laughs> just mind-blowing. Uh, I pulled a card of cards this morning. Um, uh, how? So it, uh, what it did was it gave me the confirmation of my pre-sent creation. And that's all I'm looking for now. I'm not looking for anything other than what I've already put into creation, my intent, and the things that I desired, and what I wish to see in this world. And uh, we all have that ability. And we're doing that collectively sitting around this table right now, which is really cool. Um, and what a table it is. Thank you, criticalmassradio.co.uk. You know, without Paul and Lisa and the crew and everybody, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here doing this right now. I know I wouldn't be. Because there was, there was no way I could... Uh, I could have maintained anything um, of this nature. Uh, but the universe always provides. And in this case, literally the next day. Um, so it's all good. It's all good. So let's get into a little bit of allegorical stuff here. I just want to get back into the groove of this conversation. That's the thing about downloads. It's a groove, right? That's why um, when I... Uh, and <laughs> I think a lot of people are nervous when they're talking with me in case I start talking. And, and I actually do stop and somebody jumps in and then... Um, said, oh, oh, sorry, no, no, <laughs> it's okay, it's good. You, you guys will know when I'm on a download, um, because I don't leave room. <laughs> I just keep going, right? Um, and of course, any any anyone new that comes in, uh, you'll learn very quickly because you'll 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 actually feel me hitting the brakes, and it's it, it is like hitting a wall. That's what it feels like when people jump in, and I'm like a little uh, <laughs> oh shit, what was that big bump in the road? And then I, I, this this connection, once you get it, this connection to your higher self, your the ether, whatever you want to call it, whatever it manifests in your universe, is so tenuous at best. It is such a delicate thread. And it takes just a little to knock it off. It's no wonder that we've had such an issue doing it. That's why I know this, right? Um, and on occasion, you'll get to see it. I'll blah, 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 and somebody go, hey, blah, blah. And then it's like, you, you can actually feel the, the, the snap of the thread. Um, and you guys that are, you, when you have your download moments and connections, and and you know when you're on that roll, when you're in the download, and you know what it feels like when someone just gives you a little nudge and it takes you off, and you go, oh, you ruined the ride. And that's what it feels like every time. So here's a, here's a bit of the download that occurred today. Uh, where was it? Let me just get it start here. And uh, yeah, bring all the pyramids down. God damn it! Absolutely. Um, yeah, I uh, there. I, th- I think the conversation started off uh, with regards to uh, I think a an interview that uh, Max Egan had been doing, talking about the fear porn from NASA. Right, uh, and we have a few uh, more anachronisms uh, for or not? Yeah, I think that. I think so. Anyway, um, has anyone seen or read the NASA? Yeah, no. I, you're missing the point of what what the allegories are, and that's what I'm talking about. When people are stuck in the story of what's literally going on, they're missing the allegory. It is that blatant. So if you see someone talking about something literally, like uh, for example, uh, word today. Uh, there was a bank in town that got robbed, <laughs> and everyone's oh this and that, and I'm thinking, all right, what's um, what does that represent in the grander? Oh, okay, I got it, and, and it is. It's the you know this whole thing about people just being tired, and it's and it, and it's it, what is more ironic is someone going in to rob a bank, and all they're taking out of it is debt. <laughs> Banks hate cash. <laughs> it's all debt to them. I know. Bank manager told me that once. All right. So uh, let's carry on down here. Uh, yeah, I had uh, mentioned uh, about the pyramids. I'll say this again, right? That was uh, the big. That was a big um, division between Tony and myself. Uh, Tony was absolutely in love with you know the technologies and you know uh, free energy and teleportation. The pyramids are great and all the rest of it. And me, I. Um, I was of the complete opposite stance, right? All I could see there was uh, Domo Origato, Mr. Roboto, you know, technology to rule our lives, you know. Sorry, we did that with Atlantis, and, well, we all know what happened to that allegory. 
right? Um, and I wrote tearing them. Well, I wrote it kind of in in my typical Kate way. Oops, get on, get out of here, you yuck, <laughs> a mud wasp. Anyway, um, yeah, tear them down, and uh, to me, they're just smart meters on the grand scale. And why Gaia flooded them off her back, uh, which shortly thereafter they dragged the moon into place. So that's my next target. Take that puppy out of the sky. All right, um, and hello there. Came right back with a beautiful one. Methinks uh, we're in a um, uh, we're in a pyramid, or they're locking mental constructs in place, uh, being on the ley lines. That's exactly what they're doing. That's why these things were strategically placed to carry the energies around to keep mankind in, in a state of sleepiness and under complete control. Um, and nice one, Will. Welcome to the holy day for the corporate slave work units. Um, yeah, that, that, that being the uh, the uh, United States Corporation. Uh, uh, with uh, its corporate president and board of directors, uh, Obama and the rest of the panel, um, putting on a party for the rest of their uh, employees, you know, the, the good American citizens who uh, are in need of a party once a year to, you know, it's a company party. That's all it is, you know, you gotta get drunk and shoot your guns and do whatever you want and see the fireworks and the music and everyone's happy dancing and waving the big military war flag called the United States flag, which is a military war flag. Uh, means you're in a state of war with that one. So go ahead. I am so happy to be at war with everything. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, you know, I, I don't. It's like Canada Day we had the other day. Um, same deal up here, right? <laughs> Worship the beast. <laughs> Worship the flag. It's Canada Day. This fictional fucking construct, flag thing that uh, everyone needs to be a part of. Canada Day. It's it's a logo. I don't know. Do they have McDonald's Day? Well, as I call it, Rotten Ronnie's. <laughs> you know, do they do they have these big cor? No, it's only the big corporations that get those parties, right? So anyway, here we go. Let's um, gotta get past that. Get past that. Yeah, one of the comments I'd made was, I have issues only with those that have done some good work but refuse to move forward, but rather uh, climb up the self-made pedestal. Um, and as a result of climbing up the pedestal, you're climbing down into the beast. It's kind of neat how it works. And, um, yeah, as uh, Nav put it, they get trapped in the fame game. And it is. It's very disappointing. You see, that's the problem with... Uh, that's why I abhor and shun... I have my whole life. Any Then that's the joy of being trans. Is it's You don't want the spotlight. You just kind of, oh, I'm okay here. <laughs> I'll be in the little shadow part, and I'll just sit and play my guitar, and now... Oh, shit, here we go again. Push forward. And this has been the story of my life. Universe just keeps going, get your ass up there. And I, okay, okay. And I do it. And uh, it's actually starting to get to be fun. So it's a totally different perspective on it. Um, where are we? Just oh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we got um, uh, someone had mentioned, where was it? Oh, this was uh, a movie that we were, were uh, oh, uh, Inglorious Bastards. And I had correlated the ending of Inglorious Bastards with Charles Manson allegory. Because at the end of Inglorious Bastards, what the, what the guy does is he ends up carving a swastika with a knife into the German's forehead so that he would always be reminded. Now, people say, well, ah, that's really, you know, whatever. And I said, well, yeah, well, what is the swastika, right? It, that, that's one of the clues as to how everything's spinning backwards here. Because the true swastika turns clockwise, not counterclockwise, as d displayed in the Nazi flag, or as we have been shown it to be, right? Uh, the Microsoft logo, people say, you know, it's the swastika. Yeah, it is, but it's also the true swastika, too. <laughs> that swastika works both ways. So anyway, the, the uh, Charles Manson, of course, has that tattoo on his forehead, right? So that's why I correlated that with that. And um, I was talking the other night about um comparing what you know Charles Manson was blamed for you know he he actually didn't do any of the Tate killings or or what have you uh but he was instigated as being the initiator to of the quote cult unquote of getting you know people brainwashed to go out and do it for him and of course uh others that had actually did, done the killings are free now yet Charlie is still in in prison and in, and that's where he'll he'll stay uh, that's how afraid the system is of him. And uh, but you know, a 
United States general or Canadian general or British general, I don't care what any fucking military guy, top dog, they're the, they're the same as Charles Manson to me. Just because they're not out there pulling the triggers uh, like the rest of the jarheads that they're giving orders to, that that they're just a Charles Manson to me. They're more psychopathic than the ones doing the actual killing because they're the ones ordering it. You know, so the intent has to come from them first in order to, you know, set forth an operation. So there's a lot of culpability there on, on that individual. You know, just because you're driving the getaway car and someone gets shot during the bank robbery doesn't mean that you're any less guilty because you're there by intent. You're part and party. You're by omission or commission guilty of that same crime because you knew it was occurring. You may not have known that someone was going to get killed, but it doesn't matter. In for the penny, in for the pound, hot shot. <laughs> you want the big bucks? Well, you got to ride the ride the pony with the rest of them. And if you get caught, which you will, you pay the price. You pay the piper. And yeah, I have, um, you know, I, I've listened to a, a number of uh, Charlie Manson's uh, parole board. You can call them rants or whatever, but there is no question of that man's genius. There is absolutely no question. He knew what was going on back when all that shit went down in the late '60s. You know, so, uh, you know, don't kid yourself. There's That man is no fool. And he's just playing the game with the system now. He's got his own thing going on, obviously. He's been there for so many years. Uh, and I, I had uh, also wrote that the actual killers were set free, and and uh, that, for me, was all part of the victim programs. Um, and I wrote, Charlie's one smart cookie. He knows what's up and knew it then. And the system is terrified of his mind. Right, so um, I did have a chance to pop on. I, I just opened the page up. I didn't listen to it because uh, I've, you know, had a, a couple of opportunities to sit and chat with with Max. And as I had said in the chat, uh, you know, the first uh, panel discussion I was in where he was in it, I, I, I couldn't stay there. I just, <laughs> sorry, see ya. It was just going circular real quick, so I uh, I I hung up basically, and then of course uh, Tony wanted him on, and no and no harm to Max, a nice guy. Um, um, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of playing in the game, he's uh, he's I think he's getting a bit deluded by his own fame, but that's okay. And uh, that, I'm talking to the ego, not the being, right? So you guys know the difference. I'm just looking at the programs that are running, and and I just see it going circular. And that's okay if people want to, you know, they can attack me all they want. Um, but they are going to have to look at their own mirror sometimes. So, and that's okay. And hello there, said it perfectly. Time to dismantle the fear porn. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, the, as uh, I'll go down this chat and get into the groove with it. Now, the fear porn is the mirror to our light. The greater the light, the greater the visibility of their fear as displayed in their actions. Each rise in our ticking and talking has them resort into even greater reactions, but that only awakens more up as a result. So the more that they're doing to ramp this, you know, quote, fear porn, unquote, up, it actually awakens more, even sleepier people. So it destroys itself. The, the whole intent of evil must be to destroy, and, it, and by definition, it will destroy itself. Right? So, and there was another mention uh, by October that um, there was another interview about that same document. Don't know the lady's name, but uh, my comment was uh, that I'd seen it too, and I tried to see her eyes, but they were they they were just too fucked up, too unstable. There was just a really, I guess, had a, in short, as I put it, her energy creeped me out. There was something else to it that just didn't uh, work for me. And, and, of course, we started off with, uh, with NAV going, NASA equals never a straight answer. And, yeah, that's that's my favorite uh, NASA anachronism so that works for me um yeah and yes indeed all the space programs around the world have a very similar logo for a very similar reason and i i uh, came up with a couple of original ones this morning nasa equals nice and simple allegory and uh, another one uh not a serious adversary <laughs> it's all there just making the shit up as I go. Oh, and um, my favorite was uh, Needs a Spanking ASAP. <laughs> so that was my favorite one of that. Uh, yeah, the, and John had come back with uh, uh, the end is Nazi, no doubt. Well, actually, uh, I'm sure they had come up with something to call it Nazi, N-A-S-I, right? Well, the, you, you know, you have the NSA. There's another. It's all there, right? So 
but um, that I'm sure they thought, well, that would be too obvious because somebody will say it's not NASI. It's easier to say NASA than NASI, right? Because eventually it would sound like Nazi. Okay. Um, now, one of the, the where we got started here was um, one that I heard way back when uh, back in '86, uh, when the Challenger exploded. Uh, <laughs> the the NASA quote joke going around at that time was needs another seven astronauts, which I thought was kind of. That uh, was just bad, but it, more importantly for me, even at that time, I saw the Icarus allegory. And uh, for those that don't know the story of Icarus, Icarus was the one that took the the wax wings and started flying towards the sun, uh, getting too cocky and arrogant, and uh, ended up getting uh, his wings melted and fell to the earth. And uh, I saw that allegory in relation to NASA because, you know, here you have a, a large, you know, corporation. Obviously, there's way more technology than, than has ever been let loose, and that's okay. I don't care. It's all nonsense anyway. But when you see something like that happen, you can tell that there was, a, and I, that was my first major investigation I ha had at that time, and I'm sure there's still somewhere in a box in the storage, uh, literally thousands of articles, everything I could find um, on uh, what had happened. Unfortunately, you didn't have the real advent of internet, and you know, so it was going around physically. You know, and all I could rely on were the newspapers and trying to you know piece things together and read between the lines and and see what really went on. But that was my first real you know investigation as into what happened and and what motivated it. And it was all money. It was all um, it's all about profits, right? And that's why I wonder why people travel, you know, they get these cars and are, you know, 150 kilometers an hour, and they don't stop to think that every part in that car was supplied by the lowest bidder. Do you ever stop and think about that? <laughs> Not the highest bidder, unless you're driving around in a, you know, a Ferrari or, or a Porsche or something of that nature, you know, Bugatti or Lamborghini. You know, Jag, the handmade stuff. You know, that's why you pay the price because you're getting you're getting the best of the best, right? So I'd be very careful on these production line cars. Um, yeah, they, all the parts are from the lowest bidder. And of course, um, being that there were seven on board, that to me is a symbol of you know challenging God, as it were. When the Challenger was was man challenging you know, creation herself and, um, of course, falling and failing. Um, yeah, and I had summed it up with, I was concerned to see the compromised safety. Uh, they survived until the ocean impact and likely a few survived and simply ran out of air uh, underwater. So, um, you know, they, they didn't really hop to it to, to even go after it. But here's where it got interesting. Um, I had posted that Pluto's, as a result of Tracy's post, I because this one was really in my face um, and things evolved and, uh, and downloaded on the fly here so check this out Pluto's new moons are Styx and Cerebus coincidence? well uh, what album do I have in my car that the only one I listen to is Styx Greatest Hits I've talked about that many times I just did it again I did it last night night before and whatever and of course what is my tricky little bastard well I've been calling it Cerebus uh, the three headed tricky little bastard uh, <laughs> guarding the guarding the gates to my hell <laughs> and if you want to play there um, you know I send it out for fresh meat as it were so I thought it was um, very interesting then and then I just uh, carried on from there and it just seemed to unload now something else matrix which we've talked about the matrix movies and cloud atlas we've talked a lot about that of late uh, as it turns out, the director, Lana Wachowski, she just came out as, trans as transgender. You know? And I'm sure this is in the, in the last number of days that this information came out. And I have to tell you, watching that last night, the vindication that went coursing through my soul and all of the dots that connected, just knowing that, because... I got, and I'm going to talk a bit about The Matrix tonight, too. Um... 
And the big epiphany, don't worry, it's it's not that. Well, it is that big, but it just confirms everything we've been doing. Um, well, I'll tell you what it is now, then I'll carry on here. The big epiphany is this, right? Maritime merchant law is all based on the ancient Phoenician law of the sea, the traders, right? That's what maritime law is all about. It, and it started up about 900 years before Rome. Roman Empire kind of thing, right? And isn't it interesting that everything in the maritime law, in the courts, all of the legal, the whole legal system, as you know it, is all based on Phoenician maritime law. And then I connected the dots. I thought, okay, well, you know, and Santo had mentioned before about, you know, uh, it's phony. It has to be from the Phoenicians. And let's take it a step further. And this is what clicked. Well, phonics. You know, I wrote the essay, Hooked by Phonics, and it was glaring at me right in the face, and I still didn't put this last little piece together, but here it is. The whole legal system is based on the illusion of phonics. It has got nothing to do with the spellings. That's the trap. And the essay that I want to put together, which I was going to do today, but today just didn't happen that way, is I'm going to write out paragraphs. And I've done this on the air many times. I've done it in Skype rooms where I'll write out alternate spellings of the same sounds. And it's in one of one of the essays. I think it's in the Hooked by Phonics, where I show that. Here's what it's here. <laughs> Here's what you think you said in normal writing, and here is what can be assumed and presumed you said by whoever is listening to you. And that's generally the judge. That's why the presumption and assumption works. So they can they can assume and presume anything they want. And that's why in their world, paper rules. Because on paper, the actual spelling is spelled correctly with the right intent to it. So you don't need to mess with the words. We just had to uncover the phoniness of it or the phonics. So there's the two pieces finally put together. Game over. All right, so it's a new game. Again, well, to me it was a brand new level. So uh, I think the next essay will explain that a whole lot clearer for you guys. So let's carry on with the little... Uh, uh, allegory uh, hunt that, I, that we went on today. So I wrote, uh, Matrix and Cloud Atlas director Lana Wachowski comes out as transgender. Coincidence? Hmm. I th you know, think maybe we're on to something here. And, of course, everyone, I know this, this just resonates. Of course we know we're on the right track. And I wrote, show me the way. I've talked about that coincidence. You know, the pre-sent coincidence. And, uh, Here's the thing, and I wrote this. I just wasn't expecting panorama and technicolor examples, and that's exactly what it what it's feeling like now. Like I'm watching this incredible movie in technicolor with full spectrum panorama scenes and these beautiful uh, uh, landscapes and tapestries that are just unfolding before my eyes here. So, uh, and, and John, you wrote it perfectly. Funny how the universe works, isn't it? When you see it. Yes, and hello backed it up. The universe seems to have a sense of humor. When you see it, you will laugh. So here's Pluto's new moons. And I, and I oh well, I actually I wrote I put the link in for people to see it so they could actually read the article. And thank you for, for posting it, Tracy. Um, Pluto's new moons. Now let's let's walk it down here. Pluto is Hades. It's known as the destroyer or the transformer. Rule Scorpio, no less, right? And Chiron or Charon is the boatman. So those were the first two, Pluto and its first big big moon discovered. And here's the, all the different characters. Styx is the river, and Cerebus is the three-headed guard dog. Now, as I wrote here, this is just like watching a movie now, watching the universe unfold her secrets for those who wish to see the allegories. I'm going to bring in Harry Potter here, too. Um... Speaking of Cerebus, do you remember the first movie when Harry and, uh, oh, what's her name? Hermione and, what's the redheaded kid's name? Oh, I keep thinking of Ralph Mouth from, uh, from Happy Days. Uh, anyway, the three of them have to get past the guard dog, which was a Cerebus. It was a three-headed dog. 
And how did they do it? Well, they put a harp. <laughs> Ireland? Okay. They put a harp in the room to play, and it played. And, they, and that's the same thing that Hercules did, put Cerebus to sleep. Hercules and Perseus were the only ones to get by uh, Cerebus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Twelve labors of Hercules. Hercules, thirteen, war, thirteenth warrior, and actually it's Heracles, not Hercules. Heracles. Now, if you take the word apart, you have Hera, which is, of course, the divine feminine wife of Zeus, and Clé en français is keys. So the keys to the divine feminine. When I see Hercules or Heracles, that's what that's what I saw at first time. The keys of the divine feminine. All right. Um, when they got, Harry and the crew got past Cerebus. They ended up in another room, and what, what was the game they had to play? Well, they had to play life-size chess. <laughs> Pawns on the chessboard. So you got your 64 squares there. There's your uh, game board, your matrix game board. And, uh, oh, it's going to drive me nuts to remember his name. I only watched all the movies. I loved them all. They were great. So many allegories in them. Okay, so here, here was the other ones. Nix and Hydra were discovered together as well. So you had a couple of groupings there. You had Nix and Hydra uh, were discovered together. Um, Pluto and Chiron closest together. And, of course, the new ones, um, Styx and, uh, and Cerebus, were found together very closely. Now, okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's Ron. Ron, that was it. Ron, thank you. Why couldn't I think of that? I had the R. I just couldn't get the... Oh, there's that Ro-N. <laughs> Ron. You know, spirit, breath, mind. Oh, i got to look at uh, all their names now because it totally makes sense to me. Well, Hermione, right? Hera, my one. <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> all right, so we have Nix and Hydra were discovered together as well. And Hydra is the many-headed ego. That could also be um, Medusa. Right, the serpents for hair, the many heads, uh, Scylla and Charybdis. Scylla was the many-headed Hydra, right? And and what does Scylla do? Well, she picks off the crew members. Charybdis will just wreck your whole damn ship, you know. So devil, deep blue sea. Where's your choices? Catch twenty-two. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right. So you, the only way you can get out of it is get neutral. So Hydra was discovered. This is just a coincidence, okay? Seriously. <laughs> Hydra was discovered in 2005 on June 15th. Coincidence? Maybe I see that and I go, ah, my trail, got to follow it. So I did, and I'll show you how my trail unfolded here, as I could see it. Because I don't know what June 15th has any reference to anybody else, but it sure as hell resonates with me. You know, Magna Carta was signed on that day. You know, I showed up here on that day. Um, lots of interesting things. But to me, it's it's not important that it's my birthday. Oh, big and deal, right? What it is, is is one of my clues. And that's all these things are. That's why I don't care about them. I only care about them for what they are, not for the emotional. Uh, yeah, I had as a kid emotional attachment. Woo, it's my birthday, you know. I get shit or something like that, right? So here was the other one. Nix was discovered same year, but on August 15th. And I'll tell you why. As soon as I saw that, my alarm bells went off. I said, I know that date. August 15th is very relevant to me. Because on August 15th, now keep in mind, the moon is called Nix. You ready for this? You ready for this shit? So the moon that was discovered on August 15th, 2005 was called Nix. August 15th, 1971 was when a certain individual took the American dollar off the gold standard peg currency, thus the world was unpegged from gold. And who did that? Oh, that's right, Nix. Um, just a coincidence, though. All right, so <laughs> I wrote it a little differently. Uh, Nix is the Greek goddess of uh, darkness and night. And I, and I went and, ch <laughs> and I like, hello there. Nix, Nix on. The American, and of course, Nix off his, his, was his Russian brother. Uh huh. That was good. All right. So here's what Nix is. Nix or Knox? Four Knox? Have I talked about that about Cygnus or anything? Maybe. Thought it might have. The boxing of the dark. 
I'll tie all this together. It's still it's still running rampant right now. I've got lots of stuff scurrying about in my little noggin. All right. Uh, now it's nox in in the Latin translation. That's where we get words like obnoxious or noxious, right? Um, now she's the Greek goddess or personification of the night. She's the allegory of the night. A shadow a shadowy figure. Nick stood at or near the beginning of creation, and was a mother of other personified gods, such as Hypnos, which is sleep, and Thanatos, which is death. Her appearances in mythology are sparse, but reveal her as a figure of exceptional power and beauty, and she is found in the shadows of the world and only ever seen in glimpses. Of course, but we're starting to see her now. So we can nix this allegory off the list of things to connect, right? And I put down, of course, other things that resonate with me uh, came right to mind were the New York Knicks basketball team. And, of course, what is York? One of the two uh, uh, um, families, the York and Lancaster, that was, I think, uh, uh, the Plantagenets War, uh, War of the Roses, Okay. And as I put here, York being one of the houses of the War of the Roses. So that's why it was called New York. It used to be called New Amsterdam. That was the original name of the city. I know that because I read a book about it <laughs> in public school even. Fascinating book following the life of uh, of, a, of a young girl through uh, New Amsterdam when it was first uh, you know, being founded. Now... Uh, now, War of the Roses. Now, Ro says, say Latin himself, herself, itself, and Ro, spirit breath, so I put it down. Spirit breaths of herself, himself, itself, or the trinity of one. It had a, um, where was it? And here's where I, I had a major epiphany last night. Made me, And I laughed uh, at myself. I laughed silly at having missed it, uh, when I just uh, explained there. Uh, the last connector of Admiralty and Phoenician Merchant Law. Uh, the whole legal merchant or merchant, what is a chant, right? Is based on Phoenician law or phonics. It is this crazily simple. So we're, we're right, we have been all along. And I did, I giggle myself silly. And of course, mare, uh, as in mermaid or merchant or mercantile, any of the M E R words. It still has the sound of the mare, M-A-R-E, the divine feminine horse, right? And I, I just I wrote, I will write a, an essay on this. And there is merci en français and mercy. Lord have mercy. The phonics, man, they've had us, <laughs> they've had us spinning for so long, and it's it's getting clearer and clearer to what degree. <coughs> excuse me, the clearer it gets the happier I am. Now, um, someone had asked about um, what's the mare and man. That was hello there to ask that. But there are so many layers of this and it really needs to be, I, I've got to get in a zone just to write all about it. Um, to try to just cuff this one, forget it. I've, but I assure you there are dozens of layers. Now, Pluto is known as the great destroyer or the recreator, the transformer, as you will. Look at the movie, Transformers, right? Chiron is the boatman, and I've always had a personal empathy for Chiron or Charon or Karen, which comes from Catherine. So it was, it it had a, a phonics connect with me, and the phonic, of course, um, is the root, right? Like the word um, Catherine means purity, and what happens with with the different layers that came out of it? You have Kate, you have uh, Kathy, Kathleen, Katie, Catlin, Karen. Etc. 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 There are literally dozens of names that came out of Catherine, uh, and all for a reason, right? We're all telling the same story here. So I have a personal empathy for uh, for uh, Chiron. Uh, the boatman uh, ferries soul safely across the sticks, and I've actually talked about this uh, quite a while ago on a show. As far as my empathic or uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, Affection for Chiron. I've always had great affection for Chiron and Pluto. Um, 
So the boatman ferries souls safely across the six, and uh, my attitude was I just chose to pull some souls from the river <laughs> on the way. Why not, right? I mean, what the hell? Uh, then Nix and Hydra are discovered, Nix being the allegory of the divine feminine void creation aspect, and Hydra picking off the ones not ready to cross. That'll be the ego, right? That's the Medusa. That, that's the one thing that turns... Well, I tell you, stones don't float too well on the water of truth. They sink. So if you're going to be stuck in the, in the ego, getting angry, getting hateful and spiteful and everything else, um, well, you know, you're, you're just staring at Medusa all the time and you keep getting turned into stone and you keep sinking. All right? So then sticks uh, to put the river in place and... <clears throat> um, these are the the moons as they're discovered, right? And sticks to put the river in the in place and Cerebus, the guard of the entrance, where none may enter and none may leave. Except Heracles, the keys of Hera, um Hercules put it to sleep on one of his twelve labors. And there's that twelve again with Hercules being the thirteenth warrior allegory, right? Christ and the twelve disciples. Hercules and the twelve labors, Joseph and the twelve brothers, twelve zodiac. So what's the 13th, right? Ophiuchus. Anyway, um, now the the word uh, hell, by the way, comes from the uh, from the word full word helios or helios, which is the sun. Because people forget that everything works both ways, and if the, if 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 the church is telling you to fear one thing, uh, you know, fear hell. Well, I'm going to go have a look at it and go, ah, what are you hiding? What are you hiding, you crafty bastards? You pedophile maniacs. What are you hiding? Let me see what you got. So I go looking, right? And here's the other question I've always asked. So why do we say hello if hell is such an evil place? I mean, hell. <laughs> the church has made us a fret of hell for eons. Hello? <laughs> this is what I've been writing here. So what I'm seeing allegorically is the culmination of the game. That's exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, Perseus also, he he was able to cross the stick safely. And how did he get out? Well, he got out via Pegasus, the winged horse. The constellation. Behold a white horse from Revelations. And here's one fact. You can never face Medusa face on. I was just talking about her. That's the literal world. It will turn you to stone. You must use your shield. That's your mind heart. As a mirror. To see the allegory. Okay? Uh, and I carried on here uh, with the Underworld movies. right? Even the Underworld movies showed the allegories clearly. The only thing that could defeat evil was a hybrid of the vampire and the werewolf. So in order to defeat evil, we must confront it within ourselves to bring that aspect into balance with our good and literally become the divine feminine masculine hybrid because when you put them both together, you, you create the third. You complete the trinity. Um, you know, I actually wrote it. I was thinking I didn't, but I did. Only when we see both aspects of our nature, good and evil, can we become true walkers between the worlds. Now, the quad nature of us is that both masculine and feminine contain both good and evil. So, I mean, there's a good and evil feminine and a good and evil masculine. So it's quad. Four. So this is the balancing of the four chambers of the heart, or the star chamber. Now, the Hydra, with Hydra appearing, it showed me that this aspect was fully revealed now. Now, now Hydra was discovered uh, eight years ago. However, it only just came into my now, because I really wasn't doing a lot of research on that and what have you. I don't do that deliberately, because I now I just... I'm in the pre-sent, and the universe presents to me that which I need to see. So why would I get distracted going and... I did all that. I was talking about this the other night. I won't... I, I don't do a lot of research anymore. I don't need to research anything. I just search now. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? And I trust myself enough, and I trust what's been going on around me. Yeah, how can you not? I mean, I this is just beyond magical how can you not trust in it and it really makes letting go so much easier and today was a prime example of that I'll get into that in a little bit that was just a shit pile of fun today 
uh, I, I got to tell you, um, Lana worked wonders with this girl last night because I, 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 I finally saw my mirror. Yeah, that's exactly it, Lana. You tell him, girl. You just kick him ass. And here's one of the most revered, most powerful directors in Holly, hi, history of Hollywood. You know, not only writing and uh, but directing some of the you know the Matrix like powerhouse movies. You know, and I love the way she, uh, at the beginning uh, she was talking about. That's why I knew she she can't sell out. She wouldn't sell out. They were talking about the press and whatever, and and uh, at the time Larry was not happy or comfortable doing press, you know, interviews. And of course, uh, the studio comes back. Well, no, this is not negotiable. And uh, uh, no, you have to. The, you know, the directors are, are are a critical, pivotal piece of the marketing of every movie, and blah blah blah. And you know, all the corporate schlocky bullcrap shite stuff. And of course, Lana turns around and says, "Okay, well, I'll tell you what." Um, if it's a choice of having to confront the press uh, and you know making movies, I guess I'll uh, I'll just stop making movies then. And of course, Hollywood. Oh well, um, well, well, hang on a second, hang on. Maybe, maybe you see, this is the power of of truth over greed. Just because someone says no, no, you can't because we're the no, you're not. <laughs> So that was beautiful. So the integrity could not get sold out. And I know that because one of the things that I have known about transgender friends, people that I've, you know, not even necessarily met face to face, but met, I know they can't sell out because there's something inherently deep. I know that with me and I heard I heard it from Lana last night and it was just... It was such a reverberation of a resonance, A, in 432 pitch, bell ringing. I cannot describe it. So I urge everyone to get a chance. Lana Wachowski, uh, Human Rights uh, Speech. It's on YouTube. It's on my Facebook. I'd love you guys to watch it. If you want to see a bit of my life story, because Lana tells the story of me and so many of beings like us. And that's not just from the male to female, but female to male. It goes both ways. You know, it's an internal uh, two-spirit world, and and you you spend a lifetime just trying to fit in, and you're an odd piece of the puzzle. It just doesn't, you know, what? They, well, they don't have the they have boys and girls bathrooms, and you know, uh, wh- which one? Uh, the fact is, either one doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, so let's get back to this. Because uh, I want to talk about the Matrix too, and a few of the characters to try to show you more of the allegories if you missed them. Now, <clears throat> what was the comment made here? Most people uh, are feeding their dragon, not slaying it. And because of that, the world, and this is from Ellen, uh, the world is as it is today. Uh, absolutely. And I, I went right immediately to the native allegory of which wolf are you feeding, the angry wolf or the loving wolf, right? And you choose which wolf you feed. And the fundamental is, and if you want to know where to start from, here's your starting point, because in reality, in universal reality, we're only we're dealing with only two aspects of creation, magnetic, electric, cause and effect. But also keep in mind that each aspect must also have both parts of cause and effect, rendering creation a quad or a heart. We've got one chamber that's still got a boot on it called Ulster, and we talked about that the other night. So again, I like to remind people to do not get lost in the physical illusions of the realms here. The technologies, the fear porn, or anything like that. The day-to-day dramas, the you know, talking about your job, talking about this, talking about that, and the other. Yeah, sure. There's there's a time and a place just to you know play the game, but don't live in the game because you're missing it. It's it's like wow, you're missing it. All right. So don't get lost in the physical illusions. It's very difficult to maintain focus on allegories. If one does, you'll miss you'll miss the story. Um, okay, uh, another truth here. If we're at effect to this world, then we've lost causation from the as above or the spiritual realms. That's part of the catch-22 I was trying to uh, convey the other night. Now, another great movie I loved was um, Dragonheart. That was the one where Sean Connery's voice was the dragon. And um, I can see the guy, just can't... Uh, 
keep thinking Kurt Russell, but it wasn't. But anyway, uh, who played the... Oh, I can see him. <laughs> anyway, it'll come to me. But the allegory of that story is amazing. Um, young, uh, A young prince was in trouble and was dying and was given a piece, half of, of a dragon's heart because his own heart had failed. And while the dragon lived, the prince lived, and vice versa. If either one were, were, were to be killed, both would die. Catch-22. Okay? Uh, for those that haven't seen Dragonheart, I would highly recommend and urge you to watch the movie to see the ego and the destruction of it and the power of unconditional love. Now, for those that haven't seen it, I'm going to ruin it for you anyway, but you need to... You need to watch it again. We're not. It's a very entertaining, if you, even when you know the ending. It's very entertaining, and it's a very powerfully done movie. I especially like the scene where, uh, when Sean Connery the dragon met this guy that was a dragon slayer, uh, face to face, and uh, couldn't he couldn't defeat Sean and vice versa, right? So they were at a bit of a stalemate. So they decided to have a truce, and while they had a truce, uh, <laughs> the dragon Sean asked, uh, "Could you do me a favor? You've got." something stuck between my teeth uh, I've had it there for so very I, I think it ended up being like an arm with a sword on it or something stuck between the dragon's teeth it was quite funny uh, but anyway at the at the end of the movie this prince who had ended up being becoming king was one of the most ruthless evil kings of all time and the main character the dragon slayer was his guardian or benefactor to look after the king and um, actually taught him and trained him. Uh, think of your Star Wars allegory of Darth Vader going rogue on Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you've got the same scenario, same allegory. Uh, and at the end of it, uh, Sean Connery, the dragon, knows that it's futile, that if this king is left to keep going, it's going to destroy all of humanity. So he asked his very, very dear friend, the Dragon Slayer, they became the best of friends, to strike uh, strike him in the heart. Because knowing that if the dragon, if the dragon's heart was slain, so too would be the evil king. And that's what, that's unconditional love. And there's a beautiful, when you see the the real meanings of what creation is trying to show us allegorically, you will start to get a better understanding of what's really going on and how we need to fix ourselves. And we need to stand in our own dragon heart mirrors, right? Because we are both aspects. Um, where, what's what I carry in? Yeah, so as I put here, the dragon exposed its own heart to be slain, unconditional love, in order to kill the evil king who shared its heart. Um... But never losing, uh, but never lose sight of the fact that this is in the, this is critical, guys. This is all just a game. It's a ride. Like this is the amusement park of the universe. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of bored of this ride. <laughs> I think I've got other better things in mind, and I'm sure you do too. You know, so. Wow, I've been talking for over an hour now, <clears throat> nonstop. Sorry, guys. It's just for me. This is really, really exciting. I get back to the conversation. Now, here is uh, for for anyone that's listening for any length of time. I've talked about uh, the roller coaster ride and um, and and how it works with fear. And I love using this allegory because this is what every baby step ends up being, right? Now, when, when when you stop fearing the roller coaster, you begin to enjoy the ride. And you start steering the tracks, not the cars we ride in. Because I, way back in the beginning, it's like I, I was telling people to stop trying to steer their roller coaster car. Wouldn't make sense if you had a steering wheel in a, you know, in a roller coaster because you turn the wheel and you're off the tracks and you you know where that'll end up, right? So instead... Then, of course, the next allegory popped in my mind, the movie The Green Lantern. At one part of the movie, if you haven't seen it, when the uh, main character walks in, into his nephew's after a near-fatal crash uh, of his airplane, he goes in and he, and he 
you know, comforts his nephew who was afraid that he, you know, could lose his uncle because of the job that he had, right? And uh, as he's leaving the room, there's a Hot Wheels uh, loop-to-loop set up, and he and he he hits hits the button that launches the car, and out it, it comes and follows the track as a loop-to-loop, and then of course it the track ends and it just goes shoots off to wherever it shoots off to. There's an allegory there too, but I just keep this one in mind. And then the scene where he first appears as the Green Lantern with his ability, what the Green Lanterns can do is manifest their thoughts. And what did he manifest? There was a helicopter that was going to crash. He manifested it into a Hot Wheels car and constructed tracks for it to steer it back to safety. So that's what I mean about the roller coasters, steering your tracks instead of steering your car. All right? Um, also, and I put here, the, the the scene was foreshadowed with uh, with his nephew's birthday uh, in his room when he launched a toy car down the tracks leaving the room. Now, that was the precent, okay? The precent is our ability to create the foreshadows of our own lives. So that's why we have to stop staring at the constructs already built by others. Because we're just maintaining the same thing. We're not being very original when we look at someone else's creation over and over and over. And of course, you're not going to change it because it ain't yours. So we've got to create our own. So, and as I put here, I said I'm going to use uh, this discussion for tonight's show. I'm so, hope- I'm so hoping that you guys can see this. The allegories are, in fact, everywhere. And uh, Ellen to come back with... Um, where was it? Um, actually, prior to this was... Uh, See, oh, right from the top. Is uh, from what I was just saying there. It may help to think of it that way, but it is so. There, it is so much cruelty and suffering in that amusement park. Well, that's part of the illusion, right? Um, that I can understand for someone questioning God or call him a sadist. Well, first off, I don't give God a sex because it's both. Um, so the and I and I will I will bring this up to people. This is about changing our speak. This is how we got trapped. Talking their speak instead of speaking our own. Um and indeed for some this place is hell, but it's a chosen one. And and as Ellen says, but as you say, always both on this nouveau heaven and hell, amusement and suffering. Uh the Buddhists say we are here to suffer, that is the meaning of life, because we pay our debts and can actually get out of here. Um, I don't agree with the Buddhists on that because that, to me, is uh, part of a guilt program. I see where you know that concept can come into play, but that's that's not for me. That's not what it's about here. Um, for me, it's about contrast, right? Because suffering is a contrast of bliss, and the greater the chasm, the greater the fall or the climb back up. So what happens here, when we go through intense amounts of suffering, what we now have is a perspective of a greater amount of bliss. And it doesn't take that much to make bliss happen, does it? Right? So we choose to have more bliss by choosing the mirror of suffering. It's just a contrast. It's just a perspective. And it's just a ride. Don't take it so seriously. But I do want to share the roller coaster uh, analogy or allegory for you guys because you're that important to me. It only takes a couple of minutes to do this. Uh, for those of you that have never been on a roller coaster, may I suggest you go and do it. And then you'll understand the allegory a whole lot better. I don't care how old you are. Roller coasters are a hoot. <laughs> go on the little kitty one just to get the sensation of it. Seriously. they got some pretty nifty little uh, roller coasters. Don't go up too high, but you still get that rush when you come over that hill. It's not a big one, but it's there. Not like the, you know, like the Great Canadian Mindbuster or uh, a bunch of other like crazy roller coasters I've been on. I love roller coasters; they scare the shit out of me. I just love it. And the more rickety, the happier I am. <laughs> There's got to be that sense of I can fall out of here if I'm not careful, or I'm not, you know, getting strapped in and and just like totally encased in it. This takes all the fun out of it because you can't go with the flow, right? They don't want anyone falling and dying, right? That still happens even on those. 
So here's the allegory. So you're waiting in line up, right? Never been on a roller coaster before. This is every baby step problem you think you have. Everything that you have to confront is this roller coaster analogy, okay? I don't care if it's something trivial or something monstrous. Same allegory works with every single problem you have to face. And I'm going to show you how to start overcoming these because I've, like today, I, I was on the best roller coaster ride I have ever been on yet. And it was just awesome. <laughs> it was amazing. And I, I'll tell you, I've never been to a big mall just to go get something to eat, just to go hang out, and shoot the shit with a friend. And then, of course, I got to pop into some stores that I'd always walked by before, could never shop in. So I just walked in to go have a look around. <laughs> It was great, of course, saying hi, and it was awesome. I got to do so much today that I've always wanted to do and never could do until I had to face me and finally get that last fucking roller coaster ride out of the way. So today was the ride. So here it is. Here's your, <laughs> here's your allegory. Um, you're waiting in line because there's lots of people who want to ride this roller coaster. There are like infinite amounts of beings who want to play this roller coaster. So quit your bitching. You got the ride, so here you are. And uh, you're standing in line. And the cars load up, and then you move forward, because only two at a time can go, and you're getting more and more nervous as, as you get closer and closer to it. Then uh, all of a sudden you find yourself at the front of the line, and the roller coaster that had just went by, pulls up, and the people disembark, and because there's people waiting behind you, they're, well, you can turn back, but at this point you're thinking, what the hell, right? So you get in, you get into the car, and the bar comes down. I, I'm talking about the rickety ones, because these, the, these are the best, right? Uh, it's not these big strap-in jobs, so it's just the bar comes down across your thighs, so you're pretty wide open. And if you want to get out of that car while that thing's moving, you can. Nothing's stopping you except the bar. And that's also the thing that you get to hold on to, right? First ride, some people do. I'm a hands-up kind of girl, so I'm good. You know, hands up, baby, hands up, and the faster the better, I'm happy, right? So that being said, every every time I get on one, there's still that initial <sighs> butterflies as the chuk-chunk, as this thing climbs up. The, you've been on them. You hear the chains, and it's so intimidating. Every little chunk is is one more step closer to that over the top, right? And then you see the hill cresting and cresting, and your heart races more and more and more, and you're just getting built up into this crescendo. And and and, and you know whether you're in the, I love being in actually the front car or the back car because the back car gets whipped around and the front car gets to see everything first. In the middle, that's eh, all right. But let's say you're in the middle. You see the first car go up and and it just crests over, and of course as soon as that happens the inertia starts pulling the, the rest of the cars a lot faster. And then you see yourself as you come over this hill and it looks like a completely vertical drop and whoosh, you get up to, I don't know, whatever, 100, 100 plus kilometers an hour uh, before you hit bottom and, and, you know, zoom out of it. But that that initial, you know, trepidation, just as you're cresting the hill and then, of course, that adrenaline rush as you just see the ground come racing up to you, and you, uh, it's, you're in a car, it's all good, right? And then, of course, it, it carries on, and it goes up another hill, but not quite as high as the one you just came down. But it's still pretty intense. You get a couple of these uh, nice rushes. The first one's always the best. And then uh, you do sorts of loop-de-loops, or whatever the hell the, uh, the layout is of the roller coaster. they got some pretty stellar roller coasters, you know, corkscrews and whatever really tight banks and loops, fast 45-degree turns and stuff. It's just, you know, just to keep you pinned to your seat and, uh, you know, make you regret that candy floss you ate just before you got on the ride. Okay, so then what happens is you, you disembark. Now, there's one ride at uh, an amusement park here. It's called the Great Canadian Mindbuster. My favorite roller coaster. And... uh I remember the one day, it uh, wasn't busy in the park, and it was getting close to closing, 
uh, maybe a, an hour to closing, and most of the people had already vacated, and you still had a bunch of us, us you know, stalwarts, hanger-ons to, uh, um, you know, get on the rides as, as many as you can, right? So I found myself at the, at the Canadian Mind Buster, and uh, there was never enough to fill the uh, the roller coaster car. So you're basically, you walk straight up, you get on, and uh, you're next. Like, as soon as you walk in, you're there. You get in the car, right? And you had the option, if you wanted to, if it wasn't, if there's was nobody else there, you could stay on it and go, you know, ride it a few times in a row, which I did. I think I did it six or seven times uh, in a row. But I got to tell you, by the time the last one came around, these are your problems. Because you've already ridden that roller coaster so many times, the sixth or seventh time going down that hill is starting to get boring, and you need a bigger challenge. That's what happens with our baby steps. Those are our problems. Deal with them in the same way, but don't worry about the climb up and the rush and the adrenaline and all the rest of it, because after the ride, after you've been so worked up about things, like today for me was a prime example of it, so worked up in, in fear of that ride, when you, when you finally decide to just let go and go with the ride, what a rush. What a rush. Rant over. Anybody want to jump in here? Um... I just love to chat now. <laughs> it's been a good day. Hi, Kate. Hey, how are you? Good, good, thank you. I don't like roller coasters. No? No. Nope. Well, you don't have to like them. It's just an allegory. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I'd, uh, I'd share. Yeah, I mean, I've been on one, but that's how I know I don't like them. <laughs> well, see, they, I, I know people that have never been on them. Sue hated them. She'd never been on one. Oh, no, I have done it. At least you've done it, That was a long right? time ago. Yeah, I knew enough after that. Never get on another one. <laughs> so, okay, that was fun. Now, but at least now you said... No, it wasn't fun. <laughs> okay, well... No, I didn't like it at all. Well, that, see, but you have the perspective now. I love these people who yeah. say, I don't, like, I, don't, I don't like cabbage. Have you ever eaten it? No? Well, then shut up. You don't. How do you know you don't like it? Yeah, that's oh. stupid, but... <laughs> I've known people that were terrified of roller coasters and finally got on one, and then you can't get them off the damn things. <laughs> you know, so to each their own. What are you afraid of? You know, that's what I ask people. You know those ones that go round and round, that go up and down a little bit, like the waltzers? I don't know what yeah. they're called. I can, I can just about handle them. Yeah, it's a comfort I'm a bit zone. Of a wimp. bit of a wimp. <laughs> Well, some people don't like having their body thrown around in gravity and everything else. Me, yeah. I've you know, I've I've done you know spins and planes, spiral dives and stuff. Oh well, there you are. Yeah. You know, scares the shit out of me, but it's like, whoa, I did it. You know. Yeah. yeah. But these these were measures of, of these were lesser fear to me than just being mm. me. I watched that video today. Well, not today. The, yeah. the one with uh, Lana. I watched it, think? and I I was listening. Well, yeah, of course I. I had a different perspective on listening to that than I would have had a year ago, for example, and that was such a nice thing to hear. And she's gorgeous and she's so funny and her expressions and mannerisms speak volumes. And, and she just, She's free. Yeah, it was just wonderful to watch, but to listen to what she was saying, I could I was imagining you through, through every word, you know, and it was very poignant, yeah. She nailed it. I was like I said, it was it was so nice to hear someone so eloquently putting everything that I would love to be able to say. And, you know, I have said it. I have shared it, just not in one gorgeous speech like that, especially uh, uh, in a profiled nature, uh the way she was doing it and the vindication that came from it. It was um I don't think Lana realizes what she's done for some of us. I mean, um you know, and, and and look look at the coincidental irony of, you know, all of the things that I have been talking about, and and where does it always come back to? It came right back to Lana, the Matrix and Cloud Atlas especially. You know, just all of these things connected, and created this 
masterful universe. It's great. Oh, we have a caller, Ninja. Who <gasps> are? Who's that then? Let's have a look. Have we ever had one of those before? <laughs> yes, we oh, have. Oh, you get them every now and again. <laughs> Once in a while. Uh, area code 604. If my computer is going to... Uh, there you are. Okay. Area code 604. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Who we got? It's Patty from Vancouver. Patty? Oh, my. How are you? I didn't recognize the number. That's why I didn't know who it was. <laughs> you always say that. <laughs> well, I guess that's because you don't recognize it. <laughs> well, I, I don't see 604 as a BC number. I see 250 as that. So it's just I've oh. now it's in my it's in my psyche. 604 is a BC number. 250, I think, is Vancouver Island and um, Okanagan. Okay. That's, that's where most I, of the calls come in from uh, in oh. BC. Oh, great places to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, if you want to get out of the city and live. Oh, yeah. So what's on so, your mind tonight, hon? Allegory oh, Queen? Hey, what's that? Allegory Queen? Yeah. Weird, uh, eh? Yeah. No, you're Torian. You better get it right, because you're one of the few that, that has... This is why, I, you know, I need the Torians to get in their center and their power because when they do, nothing is more powerful than a stubborn bull pushing truth forward. It has to be the bull taking on the bull, Rome, papal bulls. So there you go. Um, yes, I get that. I get that. Well, uh, Kate, I um, I watched that video as well. Um, is it uh, Lana? Yeah? Yeah, uh, Lana or Lana, whatever L- way Lana? you want to yeah, I say Lana, but that's me. Lana. Uh, and, you know... Um, I'm from Belfast, Ninja don't you done? know? Yeah, Ninja's here. Oh, hi, Ninja. You you had said that... Um, hi, Patty. ...that um, it really resonated with you and that you thought of Kate when when you were listening to it and watching it, and I did, too. I mean, it was so powerful. It was mesmerizing. Now you know where the truth comes from and why... You know, I got to tell tell everyone this. Try to imagine how it would feel to know what you know, and know that you have to get what you know out, and you have to pass through your gates of hell to do it. Because no one's going to believe you if you can't even be honest with everyone as to who and what you are and where this truth came from. This was my honor dishonor war within, and that's when. It was shortly after the Judge Bowes video, I just I could not take it anymore. Mm-hmm. I could not deal with it. And now imagine having what I've been sharing and trying to get across, and and everyone resonating and bringing theirs to the table, and you know, resonate, uh, giving me resonation to take it to the next level, and vice versa. We like we we literally exponentiate and feed off each other's beautiful energies and truths that come to the table. That's why this table is so absolutely critical. It's the critical mass table, okay? And and then to to be in this position and the whole aspect, this is why doubt is such a powerful seed. To look at yourself in the mirror and say this to yourself, so who the fuck is gonna believe me? Who is gonna take me seriously? And what a perfect place to hide it though, eh? Oh my god. You know, Kate, um, your preamble tonight, before you kind of opened up the lines, was my life. You know, uh, Lana to you is you to me. Like, it, I couldn't have just... Remember today I said I was going to come on? I uh, Hopefully. Yep. <laughs> you just told my story. Well, it's all our story. Like, it's all one one story. It's beautiful, isn't it? But, but it's, it, you you have to get there before you can see the story. Like you, you know, I, I you know, half an hour an hour ago, I couldn't have seen the story. I had to evolve there. You know what I mean? It's like this is everybody's story, but not everybody knows it yet. I know, eh? It, it's, you you caught the fast train on the roller coaster, didn't you? <laughs> always. But even, like you said, too, to, um, I heard you say once, too, that, you know, once you find the truth, you go for it, just like right now, and, and I'm the same. And, you know, it was this whole thing, which, you know, the reason that I, um, 
what I did is, you know, I I just been through hell. Um, uh, and, you know, and I knew when I went on air that you know shit was going to hit the fan because of what I've what I've done, eh? Yeah, but you got armor plating, baby. Nothing but you touches know what? you. I know, but you know what? As much as I knew it, you know, um, I just didn't get it, and I had to go to my hell. And I've been in a um, a basement suite. I'm like sub. Terranean right now, and I'm sleeping on the floor on a magnet mattress. I've got nice. mag, um, magnet pillow, uh, Nikon magnets. I'm so grounded. I've got my orgone pipes, orgone blasters shooting directly at my brain because um, I think I've got this, uh, it's either brain cancer or something's going on in my in my brain, right? And I'm feeling so fucking good right now, i got to tell you. But you know what? I had <laughs> to go. This is so crazy because... You know, I'm just, I'm going and I'm thinking, uh, you know, why did I get this stupid mattress anyway? I, I had to go and get a friend, get it for me, and this is just what I was being led to do, right? And I'm thinking, it doesn't even fit in this room. So I, I moved into another room where it fits, and I'm going, oh, okay, I'm grounded. Magnet. Okay, I get it. Well, this was kind of like the warning that the shit was going to start hitting the fan. I was getting my protection ready, right? But I didn't, I, I didn't quite get it yet because I thought I was just sort of, okay, which I was, but I had to um, get to that point again. Remember when I told you about the swarming? Yep. When I was saying those those prayers? Well, it was the same thing, but it was really um, a deeper, maybe not as many, but it was a deeper gut-wrenching punch, you know? You just get it, and um, I'm going, oh, shit, okay. Well, and I go, you know what? I don't give a shit. Fuck you go. Get me. You know what? I mean, you know and what? You, I'm, I'm, you know what I, you I opened, I opened all my doors. When you said that, I'll tell you what happened. That's when your armor hit. That's when your armor stuck to you without any sort of physical outside anymore. Because as soon as you let go to the point, fine. You want to play? I'm right here. Come and get me. You can't. And it's when we put that out there. When we, that is the fearless tone. That is the fine. <laughs> Come and get me if you can. And they can't, because you destroy it in that one statement. Katie, you and you know what? You it's just crazy. said it for me, too, uh, in words that I couldn't even speak. But you know what? I've, I've known it intellectually. But, uh, like Mrs. you Doubtfire's said, there's, the bitch. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's power in the spoken word. I had to get so pissed off and, and just take my power back and say, you know, in my words, because my words created a sound of vibration, Right. Yep. Like, I kept saying it to myself, thinking internally, but as soon as I just got really pissed off and just yelled it out, I just went, no, fuck away. You know, and I, I, when I, I opened the doors. I opened the doors and said, come on, I'm, not, I'm even going to unlock it for you. Come on in. Come on, I'm just going to sit here and wait for you. You just, you you know? just castrated the pepper. You just castrated it, them. And I've got to tell you, um, it was with this healing, whatever... You know, was going. Oh, and I had. You know what's really weird too? With my orgone, like I uh, have bucket blasters, and so I put um, neodymium magnets on them, the rare earth magnets. They're really, really yep. powerful, right? To amp up the power. So, you know, but they're so powerful that I put them close together, and I, I end up getting six together. Like, and they're the size of the nickel. Okay, they're not huge, but they're big enough. I know the ones, and they're super okay. magnets too. Oh yeah, right, right. Well, I try to get those apart. Puppies. I, there's no effing way. I can't. And I'm just going, okay, what do you, I, I guess you're trying to show me something, right? And all of a sudden it was like, put all six together. Remember when I told you about that movie um, called The Django Unchained or something about the black slavery? Yeah, I think and, you, yeah. I think you mentioned that, and, yes. Yeah, uh, and, and, and so um, Brad Pitt's the uh, actor here in, and he's, you know, threatening the, the these um, black Negro slaves. Uh, and he's got this skull of a, a Negro slave that he had had that died. And he goes, now look, he said, you see, if you look at the bottom of the spine, uh, or the top of the spine and the bottom of the skull, he says there's this like a triangle. And he said with um, black people, he said it's got a, the, the top uh, triangle is different than every other one. And it and it stands for um, slavery or a, a slave mine or something. And I, you know, I kept thinking about that. And it was remember I said to you, it's going to have to something to do with 
astrology or something, and and um, it just always stuck with me, not really understanding what that meant. Well, <laughs> I've been abducted so many times um, with chip implants. I can, my neodymium magnets can't even deactivate them, so I was led to put these six um, magnets. Look, I've got a, a compass, and I can tell which is the north side on it, right. and, um, and I put it against that area in my skull. And i got to tell you, Katie, I, I, maybe the combination of all the orgone and pillows and magnets and being grounded on this in the subterranean, and I'm always thinking, you know, isn't this interesting, too, that I'm, you know, like I said, I mean, I had a great life, you know, I was driving the Mercedes, I had it all, right? Mm -hmm. And so, here I am, okay, I don't even have a pot to piss in, oh yeah, because I'm looping my urine, oh yeah, I forgot, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anybody catch that? <laughs> That's what and, you need uh, to do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> that takes oh, care of all business need. Yeah. And so here I am going from, you know, living in the best homes, the nicest cars, living in a, a basement suite of a friend's house. Um, you know, I'm paying $375 a month off of my um, income assistance because that's all they give me. You know, going to food banks. You know, living and living on the floor. Yeah, no, not even. This is a, okay. Is there any lower? Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Probably, welcome but, to my world. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Yeah. And I, you know what? And and I'm sitting here going, holy shit! When I finally got through all this um, yesterday, this is how fresh this all is. I'm sitting here going, you guys are the best. I was in the safest bloody place in the whole world that I could have been. In fact. I think my vibrations were so off that um, I actually had about 16 grams of um, medicinal marijuana that I get legally, right? I've mm -hmm. never had that much here ever. And I've got this vaporizer thing, I, I, and I was eating it and everything, and, and I'm looping my urine, and I'm rinsing in my urine. I mean, I'm just really in this, okay? You're uh, like alone. I, like, I, I, like, I, like I said to you, when I find truth, and I get That allegory, feet. the allegory you did with the bull and the matador, with the horn going through uh, uh, the chin, um, that told me that, oh, there's someone on their urine. There's uh, someone that's uh, fixing it up nicely. Oh, <laughs> man. That was I, such I, a good picture, huh? Well, yeah, but I mean, the stuff that you were pulling out of it, that that's that's the that's your total genre of character you or of God open pulling back the entire veil and looking at it for what it is not for what the literal illusion is is oh some guy got a horn through his jaw that must have hurt next no <laughs> but, but you know what's funny you know the really the only and I because I'm a Taurus and I look at bulls all the time right but yeah I didn't even see the bull in this instance all I saw was this guy's pink socks and because pink you know I mean color of death um, or the color of love, however you want to look mm -hmm. at it. Exactly. You know, it has to be both, right? Yeah, it does. So, you know, um, when I saw his pink socks, I, I mean, pink is is my color. It just simply is. And so um, I, or it, I'm not even going to say that because I don't want to claim it, but it's just a color I'm really, I resonate with. And so... Um, you claim it. You're, you're creation just like the rest of us. You, that's the thing. You know, nothing is yours and everything is yours. This is what pe this is why it drives me batty about people, you know, copyright and patent and oh my god, this, that, and the other. I mean, uh, and these are, you know, they've been dispelled with me for a while, but not to this degree that I that I fully see it now. So, um, yeah, it, again, you see the pink socks, and you you saw exactly what that represented. You know, it was uh, uh, the right hoof of the uh, the bull yeah. crushing. Uh, was it what? What was it? Um, I'm trying to see I, the picture again. I thought again. it was his right leg because it, it, was, it was the reversed, right. right? Was, yeah, it was reversed. Uh, right yeah. leg. Uh, yeah, because everything was in the mirror. And uh, right. loved your description. Uh, and this is why when I first talked to you, and this goes back to the first show you did with, um, you know, you were a guest on the show. Mm -hmm. And when you came in, and the things that that you were um, describing then. From a, from a recently departed from religiosa standpoint, what you came to the table with is exactly what people like Bill Donahue come to the table with, Santo Bonacci, a very in-depth going as deep into it as you possibly can 
to bring back the perfect contrast. But you know how but you know what you're absolutely right, Kate, and the only the only way that personally I could ever get there was through adversity. Yep. And so this adversity, and, you know, I think for all of us, you know, especially a stubborn bull, I needed a lot of it because I am so fixed, um, I am so um, Taurus. <laughs> that tell I you what needed adversity this. means? Pardon me? Can I tell you what adversity means? Yes. Can I break it down for you? Yes. I'm going to show people how important adversity really is in their lives and why they need to seek it. Ad, Latin for since or going to. Right? Ver. Mm. From verily, meaning truth. Psi. Spirit. T. Love. Oh, my God. Ad ver psi T. <gasps> Welcome home. See how they mess with us? They didn't mess with it. We just missed it. <laughs> We're just messing with ourselves. This is how we play the game. Right? We, In order to have a game at yeah. all, if you're the all-knowing God, you got to, you know, you got to set up some practical yeah. jokes. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. you got to create the little creators, the little, <laughs> yeah. little bonds or whatever they are. You know, and I, I just see a game of one-upmanship every level, right? You know, one half, we, we decide to have the, you know, the, the, the knowing and all, all knowing and all unknowing, right? With the rules of all unknowing has all the power and all the, the all-knowing has no power and it has to tell the all-unknowing what's going on and the all unknowing doesn't know what's really going on and then that energy gets swapped back and forth and and the all knowing knows how to trick us out of our power and then we you know and it, and it, it's a big swing pendulum and it and it eventually what it does is the pendulum comes back to center and we go yeah and that's what we're headed for right now we're 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 almost at center right just watch the north pole and the south pole is coming together and you'll see that in the, in the physical realm as it is effect to the spiritual. Everything that's happening in the physical is the effect of what we're doing in the spiritual. Why do you think I hang out there? I don't hang out here. You know, you can't change anything here. I tried for most of my life. And yeah. I thought, that's not working, so it's time to be caused and get back to being. And this is what, for, what the path has been about waking back up to our causal nature of spirit. That what we manifest in our present. And put it, and I've watched this unfold day after day after day. I mean, the card I pulled today, Ahu uh, from, or sorry, Ahau from uh, the Mayan deck is the card of cards. This is how, and now my cards are, I, I'm back to using them in the way I, they're supposed to be, and I, and the way I originally had the intent, but didn't have the full understanding. You know, we're looking at a game here that we didn't know all the rules for, but we knew there was a game, and we were, we had, we knew enough to play. And we had to figure out the rules as we go here. And hey, I think we're doing um, pretty good. Sorry, are you on a roll? No, you're not. You're finished. No, no, no. I, <laughs> yeah. I do want to okay. let you know. Okay, so much have, shout out, Tom. I know. I'm looking at the clock. I get ten. Okay. I'll do that now so, so that we sure. can roll and keep going. Uh, we have Stola in the call, and we have uh, Jeremiah. So just give me a sec, guys. And, of course, Patty. And uh, <laughs> give me a sec here, and I'm going to let you guys roll, okay? Because uh, I've been on a roll all night here, and I want to hear from you. Um, great big thank you to criticalmassradio.co.uk. Um, you can go to uh, is it I support cmr.wordpress.com, Ninja. Uh yeah, I support okay. cmr.wordpress.com. Okay, um, that's a, um, a page of um, supporting uh, Critical Mass Radio. And remember, guys, I'm on the air because of Paul Giovanni. All right, he is the founder of Critical Mass Radio. And it's people like Paul and Lisa and the rest of the crew at Critical Mass that got this thing rolling, got it going, where I was able to join what I thought was, you know, after many years of them being on the air, it was actually only many months, <laughs> and uh, to become a part of it and to bring this table t for all of us to sit at. And it's because of them that we, we have this. My gratitude knows no bounds. So if there's anything you can do, pop over to criticalmassradio.co.uk. They've got a donate button there. If you can donate, please do. If you can't, no harm, no foul. Get the word out. Start sharing it with people. Some of them might be able to help. But more importantly than anything else, put the intent out that we take this critical mass, 
which we're at right now, and just push it. Over. We're at the top of the roller coaster, guys. You ready for the ride of your lives? It's, you're the one, right? It's like Victoria. When I got my uh, dragonfly on my shoulder a couple of days later, Victoria got her, t- her tattoo she's always wanted, and she got it on her wrist. And it, um, Four words. Left wrist, my turn. Right wrist starts now. So is it just a coincidence that now it's our turn? With critical mass? I don't think so. But then I know better. I can see the allegories. So there you go. Um, if you can't help, great. And just get flow the energy, uh, be it in the fiat fictional sense and whatever. But you know what it is. It's the living soul essence of all of us. So always be mindful if you're spending money that it has a higher purpose to it. And that way you elevate the reverence, not the worship of the money. Because what you're doing now is because you know it is our soul and our spirit. We are now remanifesting that energy back where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Rant over. Mm-hmm. Well, I just wanted to jump in and say this is fantastic. I love this energy, and I am right at home just with all you guys and, and the, uh, the the vision and, and the... Uh, the love and appreciation, and and what an investment to make to to put our money, our you know our physical currency, uh, if if we have it, to to this platform and uh, and grow it beyond belief, and uh, that's another word, belief. I've been uh, looking into allegory lately, and it's been beautiful. I've been looping like crazy. I think I'm on in a month now, actually, maybe close <laughs> to, and it's very exciting. And and I don't even care. Like there's times where. The food that I'm eating has, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, had that adverse effect, as you're all aware. But uh, my, my intentions for putting pure uh, light within me is, is really the only thing that, that sustains me, really. And uh, it, it's difficult because uh, in my current life uh, with uh, the, the, the woman that I'm, uh, you know, my twin flame, it's just, it's difficult because uh, just uh, incorporating these ideas, but uh, to go back to belief, I've been uh, looking at this. I'm sure all of you have uh, seen this as well. But uh, it's be, and if you take life, you know, it's be life. And what are, what are you doing when you're being? Well, you're 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 granted an opportunity, you're presented an opportunity to be. And what do you want to be? Do you want to be something wonderful, or do you want to be something, uh, you know, adverse? And, and that's where you create. Are you ready to create? Are you ready to, uh, you know, to Go through that roller coaster and experience that contrast so you can grow from it? Or do you want to just uh, do something else and eventually get there? But uh, be, and that's your choice. It's neutral. And then life. What do you want to give life to? You know, uh, what energy do you want to give it? What essence to, to create that outcome? So believing is, is, is all, everything. Believing is seeing. Believing. And uh, that was beautiful. So the so looping has been wonderful. I am, I am in the zone and I'm feeling good. <laughs> wow, oh, that's amazing. Do you know, um, when you were saying that, um, and I was thinking, yeah, you know, if I could only, I tried that so hard to do what you said, but I have uh, sevens, a lot of um, sevens in my numerology, and um, seven means, mm, I might lose you guys because my battery is going on my phone, but um, sevens need to see things for themselves to believe it. We're like the Thomases, you know, you've got to see the holes in the hands. Um, so, you know, there is, uh, I, I would have loved to have been able to have done what you just said, but I couldn't. I was driven to find out for myself. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, know. and that's, that's part of your Torian sign as well. It's fixed and only you can change your own, uh, fixed perspective. And it's so difficult for those in the fixed signs to do that. It's where, you know, I'm mutable. So I have to learn to be more fixed and more cardinal. If you're fixed, you have to be learn. You have to learn to be more cardinal, more mutable. And if you're cardinal, you have to learn to be fixed and more mutable, right? So it's about taking that trinity, you know. Uh, and of course, the mirror. If you are a Torian, it says I have, then you have to learn to say I have not, and put the L in there, and you'll see what it really sounds like. I cut in half, or I don't cut in half, right? Uh, same with uh, Aries. I am, so you must also be. I am not. My big lesson was, Gemini, I think, oh, there's the problem, I think not, no thought, right? Uh, Jonathan and Charlotte, I'm uh, sorry, Jesus Christ <laughs> said that, right? It was an allegory from the other the other day, it was beautiful. But, uh, 
you guys are seeing this, right? You 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 you're, you're seeing this now, right? I, uh, well, I can jump in. It's connected. It is, it is pieced together. We are breaking this down. This simple rather very complex idea where people can start to really absorb what it really is all about. And uh, it, it's, it's coming together, and it, it, it's forming more and more the picture that we are creating as a sphere, as it is endless and infinite, and, and we just continue to grow and build and expand upon it. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So, yes, and seven, my goodness, seven, that has been following me around forever and uh, more and more every day and it's just uh it's just putting the pieces together of creation you know it's just it's 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 absolutely wonderful so yes yeah, i'm definitely getting this and i'm sure that uh you know more and more will be like hey you know that makes sense all right and then we all just contribute that little piece that says all right yeah hey that that makes sense that's it and uh that's that's beautiful that's what we're doing here and uh not to mention uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, hexagram that's going to be, you know, that, that placement in, in the cosmos, that's, that's going to be pretty, uh, that's just unbelievable. I, I don't even know what that's all about. I haven't really wrapped myself into, uh, the, uh, the astrology aspect of all these planets. I would love to find out how these are influencing me and what Libra, you know, Scorpio, you know, what, what's, what's my lesson. And, uh, and I think I need to be fixed. I think I need to be fixed. I have energy bouncing all over the place, and I think now I need to ground myself more than ever. And I think that's what my lesson is. Sleep on the floor. Yep. Yeah, sleep on the floor. I started on a on the flat floor with just a sheet, and it was just a little too hard. <laughs> you know, I always give 100%, right? Don't Just go right to the bottom and start going up. <laughs> I should have done it slowly, but I didn't have anything to sleep on, so I just used that. And then I got this mattress with the magnets, and it's made a huge, huge difference. And this and this magnet, I was going to mention too, Katie. Um, the one, the six of them that I have in this triangle spot in my, you can feel it. It's like that indentation, and you can feel it in the back of your head, right? Um, I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, because it's directing so much positive energy into that area. That's around where the reptilian brain is, right? Yep. And you know, I'm thinking, is it reptilian brain stuff that? messing with me right now and as soon as i within a couple of hours of putting this magnet um oh yeah you'll diffuse it it's a transceiver right so you're you're messing with uh, any of the frequencies trying to get to it i just want to do a, a, a quick shout out to people if you want to get in for the rollover you got about a minute uh refresh your page that you're listening to if you want to call in with skype the button will be there and you got a minute to do it and um for those that want to call in uh 661 Four six seven two four zero one, and if one minute to go, and if not, you can always grab the archive. But I assure you, some of the best stuff ends up being in the hour in the rollover. Don't know why, but it just seems to happen that way. <laughs> Keep going, guys. Uh, Katie, I'm in Skype trying to figure out how I can um, get in there because I think my phone's going to die very soon. Okay, in this case, I, I uh, if you got your Skype on, uh, I can pull you in with me. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm in. Okay. I'm in your um, private. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, I know. I've got you. I just want to let you know that oh. if uh, you're, uh, I can, I can pull you in uh, with me. Um, and these are the occasions that I will do it because <laughs> it, uh, it, it kind of, it loads up my Skype a little bit. Sorry. Oh, oh man, uh, these chat rooms are going nuts. It's beautiful. All right, so, so I'll pull, I'll, I'll grab you right now and bring you into the call. Okay, on Skype. Okay. All right, one sec. Uh, P A T T I, and there you are. So you can hang up your phone uh, as soon as you get your Skype. Skype. Oh, ringing. there we are. Okay, hang on. Okay, and and you'll be on the board, and I can just open up your line again. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So, so kill your phone, and I'll uh, I'll bring you on. Beautiful. Hey, what do fireflies represent? Because I am. Surrounded by them in my forest here. Yeah, I see them every night when I go down the trail too. <laughs> uh, maybe stole can are. jump in there. Oh, uh, we don't have them here. No. The fireflies? Uh, no, never seen them live. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. They're just glistening like little stars. 
Oh, yeah. We got lots of uh, Skypers in tonight, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we got uh, RG717, Donna, Blackwater, uh, Magnolia, Seamus. Uh, we got Ninja, Nav- Navigator. We got Stola. We got um, Lexus and uh, R. Larson. This is great. You guys, you guys are making my day. Do you know what my big wish is right now? Is that we're going to have other stations and other hosts talking about this this is i i know this for a fact that this is the only station sharing this information on the planet mm-hmm. see how important you are you're the tip of the spear boys and girls you are at ground and zero give yourselves a pat in the back welcome home Oh, Kate, can you hear me? Loud and clear, hon. Oh, excellent. Um, when you said today, oh, you know, because I, I'm, I mean, we, I, you know, I think when you get to where we are here, like I've got really nothing left. I'm so exhausted. And, you know, I've said that so many times, but I keep getting pushed to do more and more. And um, I guess about a month ago I kept saying, you know, um, is it over soon? And, and the thing that kept coming to me was it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Yep. And I and I kept <laughs> and I kept hearing this all the time, especially lately. And when I mean, just another thing um, today when you said that, I just thought, oh my God, this is just so present. Okay, well I'll tell you what the fat lady is. Ready? Mm-hmm. Do re mi fa ti. Fa was the original uh, bass note of the scale. In the ancient scale, fa was the first note. And, of course, the last note would be T, love. So it's not over until the fa, the original note of love, sings. And that's unconditional. Ready, boys and girls? Wow. That that just hit. Sorry. I think that was one of those instantaneous little downloads. Oh, and look, I have a... uh, uh, a morning dove sitting on the rail right in front of me. It's not more than ten feet away. Hey, baby. Look at you. I'm sitting here and I'm hearing a. Oh, she just she just dropped down. <laughs> there. See what I mean? Universe is 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 crazy beautiful. Just mm-hmm. get over it and get in it. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what a day. It's definitely oh. responding. Oh, go yeah. ahead. I was just gonna say. Uh, sorry, girls' rights here. Uh, I was, you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, just walking the mall with Richard, and it was just a, this is a beautiful little story to share. Uh, planting seeds, you know me, loudmouth tranny. Um, anyway, so I went into one of the shops that I walked past. Actually, I'd been in there once before with a friend who knew who I was. Uh, of course, I wasn't in Kate mode, right? And just it was a uh, wasn't Sue, it was another fr- a friend of uh, of ours. And uh, she went over, and we were, you know, checking out some things because she ha- she was a, a costume designer, uh, making medieval co- beautiful stuff this, that she that she makes. She's a a seamstress uh, extraordinaire. Anyway, um, anyway, I went in there and it's like some gorgeous stuff. And of course, well, I, I don't have a lot, so but I, I'll tell you, I I, I didn't get anything. I, I ended up walking into another store. I won't. I don't uh, give store names out, but. Anyway, uh, very well known, and uh, the reason why I walked in there was because in the window was this, I, I've been looking for a long white skirt to go with the top that, that Ninja sent me. It's the only thing I thought that would work with it, and and it works with it, with a couple of things I've got, but it, I wanted to get something specifically for it, and I hadn't seen them. I, I'd seen you know a few girls uh, wearing them, and I said, where the hell did they get these, <laughs> right? Of course, I'm not. I'm not, I did, mall. That was the first time I was in a mall, probably in two years, maybe th- close to three years, right? Because uh, I don't do malls. I just the, the energy. Uh, but again, in the position of power that I've that I that I've got now of me, and I'm talking just for me. I'm not talking about I'm powerful. You know, get out of my way. No, that was just my own centering power. Um, anyway, I'm walking past and I see this beautiful long white skirt exactly what I was looking for I said oh my god I said Richard I gotta go and, uh, you know at, at the very worst try it on <laughs> so anyway I grabbed a couple of tops and, and that skirt and went try it it was 
Absolutely. So it ended up being thirty dollars, and it was way more than. But I thought, you know, I have to do the beautiful gift that that Ninja sent me, justice. Ninja, I did it justice. You got to see this. It's just beautiful, and uh, but it was great. The two girls that were working there ended up talking with them. And uh, by the way, Ninja, uh, the one young lady looks just like you. That's, she reminded me exactly of you when I saw. I said, "Oh my God, she looks like Ninja." Uh, so I thought <laughs> I, I, I knew I was in, I knew I was in the right place, right? Of course, right? What was I just saying? Yeah. What was I looking for? And it just yeah. kind of just popped up. There it was, out of the blue. I see, wasn't expecting it. This is why you got to lose all expectations. So I ended mm-hmm. up talking with both of them, and Richard, had, you know, when I was in trying the, the stuff on, uh, Richard was uh, talking with him as well, and uh, which I didn't know. We got back here, and we were talking a bit about it, and uh, of course, Richard's a major seed planter, just like me, and uh, we just started talking. And, I, and asked for where it started was asked for my, e- you know, email address. Uh, so I gave them Kate of Gaia at gmail dot com. That's my alternate one that I use for sendouts, and. Um, which I haven't done in ages because I, I hate email. But anyway, um, got talking to them, and uh, oh, the and of course, you get Richard going. Forget it. It's game over, right? Because he, he's extremely knowledgeable, and we're both on the same page. And uh, let's just say there's a couple of girls now that are going to be, you know, Googling the name, and because uh, I told told them a little bit about my adventures, and and you get all of the oh my gods and oh really wow and you know all the stuff right the standard stuff and uh, <coughs> excuse me but there you go and uh, I met two beautiful souls today and uh, I just I I had, uh, guys I had a blast it was absolutely awesome and um, <laughs> I'm thinking. What was that roller coaster scaring me for, right? So, uh, the new and improved, get the hell out of my way, Kate, is now here. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, everybody. Because I could never have walked this creation without you. My gratitude is Who's... limitless. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say that that's beautiful, Kate. I'm glad. I'm so happy that you uh, had an opportunity to really feel that which you have given and it's 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 wonderful to see that it really is i'm very happy to hear that and i was wondering who this lana character is i have personally oh, lana, uh, uh, lana wachowski uh, uh one of the former wachowski brothers creators and uh directors of uh, the matrix trilogy and cloud atlas she's transgender <laughs> interesting can i can i yeah. make a comment on that real quick no absolutely I, go ahead no. <laughs> I, I heard something that was conflicting with uh, the Wachowski brothers and, and them uh, writing the, the Matrix or something. Uh, Sophia Richards or, or some Sophia Stewart. I don't know if you heard about this, like the, yeah. the real Matrix. Uh, you know, uh, like she wrote the Terminator. And, oh, okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard anything about that. So I was just curious because that's been a conflict of mine because based on what I've read of this book, this, this screenplay that she has produced, it really doesn't speak to me that, you know, she's involved in the Matrix. Just So I'd like to, a little feedback, clarification on that. Because I actually watched the Matrix last night with, uh, with you know, the twin flame there. And obviously, you know, I was expecting, you know, it to, to really, you know, like, oh, wow, look at that. But no, no interest well, you, at all. And that's her okay, you, so, but <laughs> you just watched it, yeah, last night? The first one? Yeah, I just watched it okay. last night, yeah. L- let me show you some of the allegories. This is fresh in your mind, so you're going to have a few aha moments. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Do you remember the scene when it was the only scene where all of them had left the safety of the ship to go into dream world, i.e. the reality, the illusion, and they they were all dressed in black except one character. One was dressed in white. Right. Who yeah. was it? It was the, the girl, uh, Switch, right? Well, yeah, when you first was see she Switch, white? though... Yes, but when you see Switch for the first time in in the back of a car, you're not sure if it's a guy or a girl. Yeah. Right? It's, go go back to the beginning and watch, and you tell me if that's a guy or a girl. And that's the whole illusion. And, of course, with Lana being involved, I knew this had to be part of it. And I knew this is why this movie appealed to me so much and why there was a connection there, and it, those connections were put together literally yesterday. 
Now, switch is the two-spirit, the representation, the pure white, the walk wow. between worlds. Okay. Who was the first one to get, get killed? Switch. Same yeah. thing in the allegory of the real world. That's the first thing the Christians came after when they saw two spirits in villages. They slaughtered them wholesale because the two, the two spirits were always the top of the totem. The closest, because they were the walkers between worlds. They had different eyes to see. Right? Uh, what are the other characters? Let's go through the characters. Um, uh, one of the other characters that was killed was called, what, who what? Bulldozer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dozer? Right? Well, what is bull? Well, that's the age of Taurus, or, or uh, Pisces, rather, with the, the papal bull and Taurus. The bull ruling. You know, you got the bull of Wall Street, etc., blah, blah, blah. And, of course, oh, dozer, yeah. bull dozer. What's a dozer? Well, someone that's asleep, so the age of sleeping, in the age, of, uh, like, with the bull. All right? What, uh, what, was the, what was the bad character's name? What was his, what was his nickname? The guy that turned, turned coat and came back to the illusion. Wasn't a dozer I'm actually also drawing a blank on that. that. Cipher. Cipher, okay. Okay, wow. what is, now let's look at Cipher, or more accurately, Cypherus. Right, as in metal, hard, physical, weighted, and psi spirit. That's what Lucifer. That is the the light of iron, getting cast down and held down into the illusion. That's the allegory, right? So cipher, and of course, what is cipher? It's code to yeah. decipher, right? Um, and that, <laughs> of course, has to be there. To let you know that it is all about code. What do they talk about in the system? It's all about codes, the penal code, the uh, United States code, right? All it's all code, 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 right? Bar code. Excuse me. Um, go ahead. I was going to say even digital code, just being able right. to see exactly. binary yeah. code. Okay, right. so there's there's your cipher character. Of course, he turned code because he wants to get back into the illusion, because he is the illusion. And he's going to do everything in his power to kill all the clues, right? And, uh-huh. of course, uh, we brought this up the other... Uh, uh, one of my, my math teacher that in, in Ireland that gave me the biggest life clues of all in learning how to think, his name was, well, Mr. Anderson. That was his name, right? So that resonated with me. And, of course, when uh, uh, Neo... What is Neo? New. The New right the uh the the, the neo human the newly awakened and what was the what was he's a divine masculine who was the divine feminine to his divine masculine what was her name trinity yeah trinity, trinity. imagine that that's just all just, coincidence just where, though <laughs> just where i was on the street today when i delivered someone where street trinity there trinity. you go now yeah. uh, and, and and who was the master or the 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 teacher of neo Morph, morph, yeah. morph, us. So morph the dark into light, us. Right? It goes deeper than that, but uh, I'm just giving you the the the, oh, the, yeah. the the first layer, so you can start to see the the easy allegory of it. Right? And that movie is I, just rife with allegory. It's sickening. It's beautiful. Who is the key master? Did, the oracle? Would that be no? No, no. The key, Ooh, master, the key is master is you. Is your mirror, ah, the key master, right. right? Now, the oracle, here was another tie-in for me. Over the oracle's door, you have the ah, Nocatiipsum. No. Did no you notice thyself. that? Know thyself. That was my they, family motto. That's a Thompson family motto, Nocatiipsum. Now, what is wow. aura? What is aura call? Because she, she plays the devil's advocate, does she not? She never gives a straight answer. Right, because it's not up true. to her... It's not up to the aura cull to tell you. It's up to the aura cull, the harvester of your aura, <laughs> to tell you all the truth you need to hear, but say it so that you may or may not get it. It's up to you if you're ready to get it. That's why I'm telling people to stop worrying about all those around them that aren't getting it because they're not ready yet. It doesn't matter because if but one shall awaken by default. When you look at the masses as an ocean that is ebbing and flowing... What we're dealing with are the the mass consciousness, all right? That's uh, um, not 
the collective or one consciousness that w- that we're working at. This is the mass that is the masses that are easy to lead into an ebb and flow. Call it the ebb and flow of war, uh, the ebb and flow of a tide. So really, what it's about is the the ones that awaken from that depending on which side they're on, we'll we'll use the allegory of light and dark. So let's say we're on the light side and we're fighting the forces of the dark side, okay? What what we're doing right now is trying to, and we're not trying, we're doing it, is to change that ebb and flow, right? So we are the new storm, the new wind that is pushing the waters of the masses, and it will be up to us to be the deciding factor because those that are not, uh, in a Rush song it says, um, those who do not decide still have made a choice. So what what that says to me very simply is those that are not awake and ready to make a choice have still made a choice to not be awake and to be at the mercy of the ebb and flow. That's how we save them. We change the tide. Katie, do you think that yeah. just when you were saying that, um, do you think that that place where you can look in the mirror and the reflection and reverse it and and just be neutral um, is the key of David? Yeah, if you want to get uh, allegorical on it, yeah. That's your key. That's your key row. That's the key that you need to turn. That's the hundredth mon key. My key. En français, oui? My who? Key? Mm -hmm. My key. (laughs) Hey, give it to my key. He'll eat anything. I was thinking monkey, M-O-N-K, like cause I, I'm still shaving my head, right? And I'm always thinking monk stuff. See, well, there you go. That's what's going to resonate with you. See, look, that's your path, and right. you know your clues. Yeah, yeah. You know, there, and this is... There's... Go ahead, Jeremiah. Oh, sorry. No, well, no, no, I, I go was, ahead. Uh, <laughs> I hate to jump in. Uh, but I was... Uh, I, I love the allegories that you broke down. I never looked at the names quite like that before, and that's just beautiful. One thing I did notice, because I've seen that movie a few times, and it was great to like really just zone in on it, knowing like how deep message filled it was. And notice in the beginning, um, you know, when he's in his room, uh, you know, is it in the binary world? What's on his door? But 101. And yep. this is him. This is him trapped in the matrix. This is him looking for things, looking for answers. 101. You know, and it's it's, a, it's almost a mirror of itself as well, kind of. But uh, it, and then it is. It's what, a perfect what, mirror. Yes, and what what room did he go to at the end that when he died, when uh, when he got shot, uh, probably a number of times that is significant, but uh, <laughs> that I didn't count. But what the room number was three o three, and uh, this is significant because uh, you know, the Trinity, I guess, right, and and that's a mirror as well. But what happens if you add three and one? You get forty four, you know, four o four, which is eight, which is infinity. So he killed his self, his physical self. And uh, and lived outside of that uh, physical construct, and and became and was reborn through infinity. Yeah, well, it's it's the death of the of the physical ego allegory. Oh yes, that was see, beautiful. See, I, there is there is no such thing as as death per se. So carry right. on. You're doing great. Keep going. Well, no, that, that's that's all I had, and and the fact, okay, well, uh, the fact that this new character Lana uh, Wachowski, I am definitely going to look into this because ever since, like I said, I saw The Matrix, that was the one that woke me up. You know, some people woke up from 9/11, but that movie, you know, incidentally, 9/11 wasn't that on his passport or something briefly. So <laughs> there, there's a link right there, but. But it's all there. The, the, the universe that, gives us everything, Jeremiah. Everything, if you have eyes to see it. It's. Oh, it's so true. And I've uh, and while I looked at my phone, I was actually at one, you know, uh, one two oh one. But anyways, um, the uh, th- this Lana character, I'm going to need Link to to find her information because uh, if she if she created the story, then I need to know more. You know, <laughs> you know this is this is that path that I've been leading, uh, rather yeah, leading we could say, uh, leading myself to to my ultimate self. And uh, by helping others find them all, their ultimate self, and not these programs that have been overlaid that don't agree with who they really are, and uh, it's just beautiful, the, just the pieces. And uh, I love having an opportunity to call in and, and engage with you, beautiful souls. And 
but they had an opportunity, and it just it, it couldn't be more right. Oh yeah, what a question. Jeremiah. Yes, Ninja. How you doing? Hi. You asked about you need a link. Just type in in YouTube uh, Lana Wachowski. How do you say that? Wachowski. Wachowski. W a c h o w s k i. Yeah, just type that in and type speech, and then you'll you'll get it. It's all over the place. Oh, oh yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. And I'll tell you what else Lana did for the rest of us in, in this particular um, acting role that we have is she just vindicated each and every one of us. Now it is actually really cool to be transgendered. <laughs> Totally. Hey, Absolutely. congratulations, Kate. <laughs> you know, talk about a mirror, huh? <laughs> Maybe I was supposed to expect a miracle of some kind. <laughs> oh, Ninja. yeah. Yeah, Ninja yeah, 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 I get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was my card a couple of days ago, expect a miracle. I don't put any more limitations on anything, and I can't. I cannot stress enough how important that is. Remove the the expectations and just get into the flow. And none were more resistant to that than myself. And that was within me. It had nothing to do with what I've been doing. I've never been resistant to the truth. I've only been resistant to just being. (laughs) As messed up as that sounds. That's why that whole thing that uh, Lana went through in that gorgeous speech was so clearing and vindicating for me because I, I, I do assure you it is it is a rare and lonely walk and uh, you know it's like what I said earlier in the show uh, what Lana found in his partner was exactly what I thought I had found with Sue as it turns out no um, too many conditions there obviously and uh, you know that's one of the things about and I say this to people especially that are married or whatever um, and I put the onus on both sides of it. Did you marry the one you're with, or did you choose to be with the one you're with based on your terms of what you wanted and what you needed? Or did you just love them because of everything they are? Or are there only bits and pieces that you want that suit your ego? And these are the things I love to throw out to people. What part of me was it that you could never live with? but satisfied yourself with the things only that you could. I'm sorry, I'm a full meal deal. I'm a hell of a... I'm I'm a hell of a lot of fun. Um, I can be anything and everything anyone needs. Yet, even being that, there is such a sense of separation of that beautiful feeling of always wondering how could anyone love all of me? That was my mission, to learn to love all of me. So, the doors are open, the floodgates are wide. And that's why I have no more expectations. That way I'll never get let down. And everything becomes creation, everything becomes beautiful. Because I'm in the flow of it. I am in full surrender to universe. You know, I thought I was three and a half years ago when I made, when I made my deal. I obviously had some terms and conditions placed on it that I was not aware of. And these are the things that I've had to peel away from me. And it's not an easy road, boys and girls, but it is certainly very simple. The most difficult part is deciding to get on that roller coaster of yourself. And and then when you get to the top of the hill, hands up, baby, hands up, and just go. Trust in the fall. Trust in the track that you're on, that the universe, just like the Hot Wheels car track, that the Green Lantern, the heart. That's what the Green Lantern is. It's a representation. Puts you. And the joy of the universe is this. The universe will never place you one where you cannot handle what is what you need to learn. And two, if you are standing in truth, and only if you are standing in truth, you will never be facing anything of danger. Even all the stuff I went through, I always knew that no one is going to harm me. 
oh, they'll rough me up a little bit, you know, step on my neck and shit like that and, and what have you. But, uh, you know, maybe rip my hair out too. Nice cops that they are. But um, I knew that that regardless, I wasn't in any mortal danger. I couldn't be. The shields and guards were up. So really, at the end of the day, I did get into the the roller coaster car with the full, you know, full strap, uh, strap in belts, uh, padding and bars and everything else that would assure that I would never, never fall from that car, no matter how fast or how far that inevitable first drop was going to be. So put on the put on the armor. Yeah. Proof. Oh. Kate, you know, just what you're saying um, is so true because when I was going through this really uh, this, uh, low time this last week or so, um, you know, it, it like you said, it's like you, it's like when you know how bad it feels to be where you are, you'll do almost anything to alleviate it. That's your force. It it pushes you forward. And um, when I was being attacked here, and I was just so tired, and um, and I was just really in, in a whole lot of, uh, of meditation and, and, and really dumbed out by the um, the marijuana, um, and um, it was like the universe is telling me, the only way that you're going to be 100% um, undetectable, and it's not about power, this is, where the, this is where the peace is, it's not about, because I really hated this going back and forth about, you know, it's a money thing, like, you know, what if all this money comes back to us? Well, I'm thinking all that would do would be to keep this war, war going because it's unbalanced, you know, and, I, and I'm thinking I, I don't want any part of it. I, I You know what? I just want it to be equal because when things are equal, that's where you're in the middle. That's where everything is balanced. For all of this um, stuff to be um, taken away from these beings, who's to say that it isn't there is anyway? Like, the books are so screwed up. Like, I just don't believe anything. I just sit and wait, and I go, you know what? I don't, if this is what your plan is for me, you can just vote me out right now because I know in my heart I didn't sign up for this shit. This is not where my heart is. And I could tell that there was uh, a snake in the grass. And I just sat there and went, nope, not the, doing this. Not. Deceivers will be everywhere, hon. And no one can be more deceiving than ourselves. Oh, look, rabbits. <laughs> Love it. Rabbits and birds. I can hardly wait to uh, <clears throat> just go for a walk tonight. <laughs> well, and this is what forced me to cut up my um, my card because um, I was in such torment and I couldn't go on any longer. Um, and, and the universe kept saying, cut, cut up your cards because then... And it was only when I came to that point where I went, I am not going to be in this power struggle. I don't, first of all, I don't give a shit about power. I don't give a shit about money. I don't want this. And I'm just fine where I am. And I don't care. You know, this is where my I'm standing. And um, the universe is saying the only way that you can do that is to lose your identity. When you lose your identity, because they know who you, you are, they have your identity. And you've agreed to that identity. The only way that you can bring uh, a force between you and them is to cut between it. And cut, cut the it. umbilical cord. cord. Oh my God. You were off on, my dear. Umbilical cord. You could do that by going to the Kato Gaia WordPress.com uh, page and uh, download the I Who Shall Not Be Named. Oh, Patty and, and uh, I have talked, and yeah, Patty's the, the, the BC secret weapon installer. Patty's the yeah. one that's going to be uh, in the mix with the Trinity of uh, Lexus, myself, and her. Because we got a few things to do, and it's going to be fun planting seeds. We're going to sow one hell of a harvest. Watch. The intent oh, I'm that's going to go out. To the intent that's going to go out. And I actually have to make uh, that tomorrow uh, for a certain uh, uh, building that I've dealt with before. And <laughs> I'm going to put them on the proverbial spot. 
<laughs> because I, I I do that. That's just kind of, just kind of what I do. <laughs> Sorry. Bullshit. Yeah. I call bullshit. <laughs> Watch. Let's see if you can handle it. If I'm I thought I could only... That, yeah. Oh, go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just trying to watching think that... with interest. Okay. Sorry, Stola. Just going no, watching problem. with interest. <laughs> now I'm stopping. <laughs> no, continue. <laughs> that was all I okay. wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Well, well I, I didn't hear what either say. of you were saying, so I... Okay. No. Uh, so, Stola and yeah. then Ninja... Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm translating that uh, writing. I shall, uh, I who shall not be named into Norwegian, and uh, I think it's uh, just dynamite. And uh, I'm really looking forward to to give it, to uh, send it to you know courts and uh, and all of that. Yeah. So and, and it will be well, dynamite. It, it will work. It's impossible to get away from that one. Yeah. If you if you can. Uh, uh, translate the long and short of it too for people. Uh, that's the layman's version of of the "I who shall not be named." That's the kind of the the story of it versus the 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 ram jam at home legal kind of version of it. You know, because I do like to talk to them in the language they understand, and I mean that literally. That's the language they stand under, and that's how you hold them. You hold their feet to the fire because the very thing they've been using to control us. Those who make the rules must obey the rules. Roman maxim. That was one of the very first maxims I ever learned, along with silence equates acquiescence. But also, silence nullifies all contracts. Because only in our consent of voice, in voice, can we entrap and enslave ourselves. Through the phonics, the trap of the tongue pledge, language, langash. Right? So, yeah, we're going to have some fun, boys and girls. At least I know I am. You know, who else wants on this roller coaster? It's it's actually not that. This one's only got maybe a. Three, it's just a very, very. It's more of a, a scenic, leveled out roller coaster. Ninja, you'll love it. Oh, <laughs> I'm already there. I'm already there. When you said scenic, I know I'm you are. There. Video provided by VerdictProductions.com. Just. It was beautiful. It was just this. The whole time I'm listening, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's ex- yeah, constantly. That yeah, so you want you know. But I also thought of something too because the first thing that came out was when she was talking about um, not wanting to do interviews, you know, doing the press thing. Uh, her and her brother, right? Uh, of course, they were known as the Wachowski brothers, which I know for her would be very uncomfortable. Uh, in as much as any time I um, hear, just because my voice is uh, very masculine, uh, hear people refer to me as uh, he or him. Um, I do, I do, I know it's confusing, and I, 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 I give a lot of latitude on that one. Um, and I do understand, I do, because when you're in this literal illusion, it's very difficult to shift those gears. And and this is effectively what beings like me do. We shift your gears. We make your day interesting. We make it seem a little bit less than normal, you know? Um, I know, the people at the mall today, uh, it was great. Honestly, it was just um, on fire. Uh, I'll tell you what happened last night. Um, I got to find me. And, like, to a level that I can't even describe. <laughs> um, yeah, there was so so much poignancy in, in, in the words she was sharing and you know and you got one of the things and it really it really struck home um when she was uh, talking about, you know, potential relationships or whatever and, and being caught in the middle and how could you know, how could anyone ever ever love me, you know? Uh, see, and that's one of the things about my life is I've lived, I you know, I, I lived in the illusion, um, literally chaining myself to something that wasn't me in order to one survive, two, um, to set aside. <sighs> I, there are no words to describe this. You got to live this particular dream, nightmare, whatever you want to call it, in order to see it from this perspective. Uh, but being caught between worlds and then, you know, forcing yourself because of societal norms, 
into a, an uber state of the exact opposite of who you are. It gives you great conditioning, don't get me wrong. Uh, that's why I'm able to share the things that I can share because I've pushed the opposite pendulum of what I am to the furthest extremes that I could. You know, and I lived it. I lived it. And just to see this wonderful being last night in full technicolor. Loved her hair. I don't <laughs> I thought it was stunning. Um talk about fully expressing oneself. But when she was talking about relationships and whatever and and this is what I thought I had with Sue. Uh, I thought I was the luckiest girl in the world. Um when she uh met her wife her wife said to her I said I didn't come for the bells and whistles. It's, I can't remember how she put it, but it was perfect. You know, um, it's that very difference about you that that I love. It's that very extreme. You know, uh, so effectively, what Lana has experienced is is unconditional love. Please note the views and opinions expressed by the hosts on this show are not necessarily the views held by the station. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio. Now, it's our turn. Yeah, well, the views may not necessarily be the views and opinions of uh, the residation, but they damn well should be. It's my my position on it. Hi, guys. Anyway, (laughs) that was fun, trying to get on the air tonight. (laughs) Of course, I couldn't get any promo up. My whole Internet Explorer froze up, of course. Uh, it was working just fine until I was starting to get <laughs> set up for the show here. Um, yeah, that's just not unusual anymore. <laughs> it's actually laughable. But all things for a reason, and uh, we just have to figure out what the hell the reason is. But most of us get caught up in the drama as to why shit happens and all the rest of it, and we never bother to actually look any deeper than that. And it's so superficial, and it's so super silly. <laughs> yeah, I, I was out for a while today. Uh, my friend Richard came down and um, just dragged my sorry ass out for a bit. And uh, I had a blast. It was so much fun. Um, that was actually... What, what, oh, there's so much to talk about. There's just so much energy and so much like, whoa, to talk about today. Um, and it started last night. Well, it started actually about June 15th, 1964, but I just wasn't paying attention until now is how it kind of works. Um, yeah, and a um, uh, friend Mike stopped by as well. It's great to see him. And I wasn't here too long, um, but I had a good chat with him. And uh, um, he was off to help a, a friend. Uh, I think it was a <laughs> – what did I say to him? He said, yeah, I'm going over. Uh, we got a – um, install a, a new tranny in the truck. Uh, <laughs> oh, so what it is is uh, you're making today a, a day of working with trannies. Is that is that how it works? Anyway, so uh, of course that was hot on the heels of this most beautiful speech given last. Well, I saw it last night. I'm not sure when exactly it was given. Very recently, obviously, uh, by Lana Wachowski. And. Uh, I got to tell you, I, wa- I watched it last night, and I, I listened to Lana tell my story, and so many others, all wrapped in, up into one because they're all the same story. And um, I got to tell you, uh, it was to give you, uh, and again, look at the coincidences, which aren't any, uh, of all the things that have been happening. And this is what I'm going to talk about tonight, because I'm going to really lay it on the line for you guys to show you just how freaking awesome, magical, and crazy this place is once you can start to see it and start to manifest it. Um, and I'm not talking, you know, all these guys with the, and girls with the self-help books and, you know, the secret and all the rest, they haven't got a fucking clue. Honestly, they don't, they don't, because everyone's so caught up in the, in the literal, and it's so, ah, it's so drama. <laughs> what are they looking for, an Oscar? Um, give up. <laughs> anyway, I, I watched this this interview last night, and I watched Lana as she was 
right? Sing, sing, sing. And every one of those seeds, I promise you, will germinate because it's your intention. It's got nothing to do with the document. The truth is already there. It's already been un, un, you know, unfolded. It doesn't matter who gets it. It's already got. That's why I'm saying the fat lady's singing, right? So, um, yeah, what a day. What a day. Uh, and the cards I've been pulling uh, from the Mayan deck and from the Arthurian, it's just mind-blowing. Um <laughs> Just mind blowing. Uh, I pulled a card of cards this morning. Um, uh, how? So, it, uh, what it did was it gave me the confirmation of my present creation. And that's all I'm looking for now. I'm not looking for anything other than what I've already put into creation my intent and the things that I desired and what I wish to see in this world. And uh, we all have that ability. And we're doing that collectively sitting around this table right now, which is really cool. Um, and what a table it is. Thank you, criticalmassradio.co.uk. You know, without Paul and Lisa and the crew and everybody, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here doing this right now. I know I wouldn't be. Because there was there's no way I could uh I could have maintained anything um of this nature. Uh, but universe always provides. And in this case literally the next day. Um so it's all good. It's all good. So let's get into a little bit of allegorical stuff here. I just want to get back into the groove of this conversation. That's the thing about downloads. It's a groove, right? That's why um, when I uh, – and I think a lot of people are nervous when they're talking with me in case I start talking. And, and I actually do stop and somebody jumps in and then um, said, oh, oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> it's okay. It's good. You, you guys will know when I'm on a download um, because I don't leave room. <laughs> I just keep going, right? Um, and of course, any any anyone new that comes in, uh, you'll learn very quickly because you'll 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 actually feel me hitting the brakes, and it's it, it is like hitting a wall. That's what it feels like when people jump in, and I'm like, oh, uh, oh shit, what was that big bump in the road? And then I, I, this this connection, once you get it, this connection to your higher self, your the ether, whatever you want to call it, whatever it manifests in your universe is so tenuous at best. It is such a delicate thread. And it takes just a little to knock it off. It's no wonder that we've had such an issue doing it. That's why I know this, right? Um, and on occasion, you'll get to see it. I'll blah, 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 and somebody go, hey, blah, blah. And then it's like, you, you can actually feel the, the, the snap of the thread. Um, and you guys that are, you, when you have your download moments and connections and uh, and you know when you're on that roll, when you're in the download, and you know what it feels like when someone just gives you a little nudge and it takes you off, and you go, oh, you ruined the ride. And that's what it feels like every time. So here's a, here's a bit of the download that occurred today. Uh, where was it? Let me just get it start here. And uh, Yeah, bring all the pyramids down. God damn it. Absolutely. Um... Yeah, I uh, there, I, th I think the conversation started off uh, with regards to uh, I think a, an interview that uh, Max Egan had been doing talking about the fear porn from NASA, right? Uh, and we have a few uh, more anachronisms uh, for or not, yeah. So I was um, who was I talking to? Uh, I think it was um, Michael and Randy just for a little while after the call last night, and. Um, what struck me was the fact that, okay, let, let, let's look at the allegory of the legal system. right? That's all it is. It's just an allegory. It's an illusion. And a damn good one, too. They got you running. So let's show you how to destroy it, <laughs> shall we? Because <laughs> this is way more fun. Okay, first thing you got to do, if you want to play this game, if you want to play with me, you're going to have to lose one thing. You're going to have to lose the emotional attachment to the game. Because it's not about who can you beat and who can you do and oh, whatever. That's still that's still such a low level in the belly of the beast game. Me, I would sooner just take the you know the arrow and go, <sighs> shoot it into the belly of the beast, have a giggle and walk away. You know, just there's no point getting. Hey, listen, if you had an option of you know having to go over and take Goliath, well, imagine David and Goliath. Imagine if if the the only weapon David had was a sword to go up against Goliath who had a sword. Who do you think would win that one? 
Right. So what we have to learn to do is take our weapons of choice, the ones that we can utilize. Right. So we all get, we got have to look at ourselves as we're all that fictional character David uh, with a slingshot, as it were. And of course, where did David hit Goliath? Right in the third eye, and <laughs> and then cut his head off. Uh, it's a little bit of a gory allegory, but there you go, allegory. Anyway, um, but that's what we have to do. We have to be more mindful, and and so many of us, uh, myself included, you know, t- took the beast head on with uh, whatever you know weapons we had, and I use those allegorically um, and tools in order to go at it. And I was very fortunate, and and I had, uh, if not necessarily the right tools, I had the right armor to protect me up to this point um, and that I had been working at for a couple of decades and I'm talking that was the, the stuff that sustained me for and Sue and the girls for uh, for, uh, for three years anyway uh, well two and a half because well it's actually more than that long story there don't need to get into it uh, let's just say those particular assets drained very quickly um, you know when you're actually not bringing anything in in terms of income uh, for well now it's like it's three and a half years now since um, yeah over three and a half years since I've uh, had any uh, form of a of an income uh, checks or whatever you know from general contracting um, very good income to nothing and that drained very quickly so that was part of my my armor uh, to keep me in the, in the fight as it were uh, not everyone, um, well, actually, I can't even say that because we all have our tools uh, at, uh, and have built everything around us that we need. All we need to do now is put those into motion, put those into, you know, effect. And uh, it's as simple as instead of trying to be the, you know, the David with the sword going up against Goliath with the sword, um, no, t- take your option, stand back and and uh, take out Goliath from a very safe distance. And that's what uh, I who shall not be named is. That's the that's the stone in the sling, and all you have to do is stand back and fire it out, and that's beautiful. And it's it's and this is exactly what I'm trying to convey to people: the unconditional aspect. And we are we are all so very very blind, myself included, for so long. Um, the eyes are certainly a little bit more open today, and of course, um, I came on to Skype this morning. I. Uh, saved a, a bunch of the conversation that was going on because w- what was occurring this morning as soon as I sat down at the computer was uh, instantaneous download uh, and trail. I used to do this all the time, by the way, in in uh, like chat rooms. I would show people my, the trails that I was uh, walking down. Um, I was doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing now from a, from the literal perspective, but still seeing the tie-ins, uh, the subtleties and the coincidences but not giving them the full weight and measure of what they were really presenting to me. And this is what I'm trying to share with all of you now. And so many of you, it's so beautiful to see, are seeing it. You're seeing the, the oh, that's a coincidence, all the time. You, you'll be in conversations with people, and now words are triggering with you. Uh, I think the, the the big one of late that I've been watching is uh, dragonflies, uh, or dragons in, in general, with, uh, with the people close to me. Um, which of course, as you're all aware, you're the dragon, and I got a dragonfly on my shoulder, and so it, it, that always resonates with me. So it's really neat when I hear other people talking about it. And uh, uh, Ninja shared a beautiful picture that she uh, that she created. Um, what was it? Dragon's uh, perch, I believe, is the title of it. Hope I got that right, Ninja. Um, it's gorgeous, you know. It, it, and yeah, wow. We need to set you up a gallery, baby. <laughs> yeah. The energies are, are incredible. Had a great chat. And actually, Ninja had a chance to have a chat with Richard as well. And I was only on hearing the one side of it. But it was a, I was just watching things that Richard was saying. And, and you could see the coincidences happening with him. And, it's like, and he lives in that world, too. So this is why it's so uh, neat when I get a chance to hang out with him. Because he speaks the same language as this. So it's, it's beautiful. Um, but I went, I went on this, uh, and I have to say, uh, uh, Tracy was the one that posted this link uh, yesterday with uh, how interesting it was that Pluto's new moons and, and their and their names. So of course, uh, 
reading reading the article and uh, <laughs> lights and fireworks were going off at all points while I was reading through this. So and, and I was sharing a bit of that this morning, um, and this is from yesterday. So I, the, what I'm going to go over t- uh, tonight is what what it was experienced this morning, and um, I'm not, obviously not going to go through the whole thing, but. There was a lot of really fascinating information in it. And I love watching you guys that are starting to rip the words apart perfectly. And then I'm going to share with you the biggest epiphany I've had in a long time la- that I had last night. And it's it's not so much an epiphany of a new realization. It's, a, it's an epiphany of an absolute confirmation that we are bang on, that we have nailed this puppy shut and that the gig is up. <laughs> it's done. The fat lady is going, la! She's singing real loud right now. Um, I'll share that with you first, and I'll get into some of this other fun stuff here. Um, oh, it's going to be fun tonight. <laughs> 